All right. Does anybody want to give a who was here last week? Want to give a recap as to everything that happened, so that way we are all on the same page. Bad at that. Break up. I can. I can give her a go. Let me just get back to my battle station here. All right. We resume after a traveling group going through the Icewind Dales is in now Brinshander. One of their companions, oh no, decides to go off on his own while the group helps Victum obtain the Flare Glimmer by doing a quest. A demonic creature is sucking people dry of their blood. As they find out, it is a cobalt speaking draconic need meat need blood the group quickly slains this creature beheading it headed back to the dwarves to obtain the flare glimmer and collect the reward of 100 gold pieces we now enter the group in the world of vesca a quick I totally alteration I thought I you're close uh, we we borrowed Flare Glimmer, or Victune borrowed Flare Glimmer. Um, the the quest to hunt down this blood-seeking beast was a test to see if they would the party would be able to handle um, collecting the uh, missing ingots for Black Iron Blades, um, to which he would give information about if you completed this quest for him. Um, and in doing so, Victune realized maybe this sword would be very useful and. In exchange for 50 gold and the agreement that the guards would not let them out of the city, they uh, went to hunt down this creature and was allowed to borrow the blade in doing so. Um, and yes, there was a bounty for the kobold, which will be collected by people, I'm sure. Um, and you'd be able to, I guess, pursue this other quest. You also did see Sefa Keltro in town. Uh, in the Merchant Square before setting off after this creature. And otherwise, everything else is pretty accurate. You guys have just slain the creature, so you are... Uh, we ended right after you, it was beheaded. So, um, if there's anything anybody wants to do with that creature or its corpse at this time, uh, so, we can zoom in that alleyway uh, with the four of you. Aethros sure. has the head, right? Yeah, Aethros has the head at the moment. Yeah, so... I guess if we are not there in time, then whatever. Uh, and Aethros would kind of look to the party. Do you do you think I could make this into a helmet? I mean, yes, but we need it. So let's worry about that afterwards. Maybe, maybe we can find another one. You're right. You're right. We need this. Well, Is there that's... anything else on the body of the kobold? Uh, make an investigation check. Alright. Oh, that's what I didn't do. I didn't bring up my clear sheet. That's... Can I do one, too? Yeah, Give if him you the help roll action. separately, or you could uh, help him roll one with advantage. It'd be up to you. Give him the help action. It's better than mine. Okay. Uh, Ibrin, yeah, you and Big Tune take a moment and kind of go through the rest of the corpse. Um, Ibrin, you are able to find, uh, two vials of unknown blood, and Big Tune, you're able to find five silver pieces. Yeah. But otherwise, the body itself seems to be pretty bare bones. Um, hard to make out exactly... I mean, he didn't have anything else on his person. Um, right. You get the feeling he was getting pretty desperate as far as uh, needing to find a sustenance food source. Don't don't forget there, uh, Ebrin, that you did, uh, or somebody did, get a vial of this thing's blood. Yep. For Ono. Oh, no. Yeah. So, let's be reconfigured. Because he said he was going to meet us at the whatever the closest tavern or pub is. 
um, the North Look, and that's where Seth Keltrel with his crew will be later. So I'd say let's head to Black Iron. That way we can do the main quest for you. That way you can keep Flare Glimmer and go collect yeah. 100 gold pieces. Wow. So you're heading back towards Black Iron Blades? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Conveniently, um, since this entire encounter happened no more than maybe a block away from the House of the Morning Lord, as you guys approach that intersection, you actually see Ono coming out from within the House of the Morning Lord itself. Uh, seems rather uh, rather unfazed by anything that you were all doing. Uh, in my hands, how big is it? Um, okay, so... In the if if we compare it to the size of a standard human hand, um, the box that you have itself is about five inches on each side. So in my gnomish hands, I'm probably holding like an, a decent size of cubish bread. Yeah, basically. Nick. Yeah. Bread. <laughs> Uh, what? So you watch as like Ono essentially is like walking out of the Morning Lord, and, and like I have an ornate box in my hand, and like I keep turning it and like fidgeting with it and pausing, standing still, pull out notes, stop, dead stop, and write notes on top of the box. And then continue to walk, and then forget what direction I'm walking in. Look up and turn around and walk in that direction. Do the exact same pattern all over again, and and just I I've kind of developed a rut out in front of the building at this point. Yeah, he didn't get very far. Like he was out there as like he probably walked out right as you guys went into the alleyway, and he's just been so mesmerized by this box that he really has not made much progress going anywhere else. Yeah, uh, well, uh, and then. I'll, I'll step up to him. Comrade, what are you doing over here? What's the thing? And can I carry your finger real quick? And I like walk up and push your finger against a corner of the box while I like hold two other sides of the box. Uh, can I make a, a roll, GM? <laughs> like a blind roll, just a blank, whatever you'd like. I'll do it with disadvantage. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Sick. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna make a just a straight, a straight up just intelligence roll. I Go guess. Go for it. Uh, I gotta roll. Yeah, disadvantage. Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like pressing this very ornate like box onto your finger, Big Tune. I'm just like jamming it onto your finger, turning it slightly about a quarter of an inch, jamming it on your finger, and going, hmm. Nope, that's not working either. What are you trying it's... to do? What? At this point, I'm about to shake the crap out of it. <laughs> nope. I got this box! Look at this awesome... Where, wait, where, where have you guys been? How long has it been? Um, where... It's been a little while. We've We've been running around town. I pull out my new sword, or the this borrowed sword. Hey, check this thing out. Oh, you might you might like to see what this this is all about. I wedge the cube underneath your arm and like begin to <laughs> examine the sword. Ooh, what's warm? Well, that's from the palm of your hand, actually, but that's still warm. Ooh. Yeah, you would notice it glowing. What what was what did you say it was? It was. It was glowing, a, like red and or orange and white. Yeah, it had as a both as it swung in the air and even as you like run your fingers across the edges of the the blade, it gives off an orange and uh, almost bright uh, white uh, shimmer. That's awesome. You what know, he told smell, us. What if I smell cobalt blood? Well, the the person at the Black Iron Blades told me 
that this was meant to slay the undead. And as it turned out, it seemed like she might have been one. Ooh. All right, cool. Hey, Tomb, what was the other name for your blade? It was Flare Glimmer and what? Oh, man, it's over there. Sparkle <laughs> Shimmer, something like that. <laughs> Twinkle bright. Sparkle yeah, starlight, star bright. bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I, may, I wish I might. I mean, have this wicked sword you have tonight? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> if you don't know and you want to remember, uh, you can roll it's... a history check with advantage since it was literally earlier today. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, my advantage would be just standing up and going and looking over at my notes. But that is a also chair. <laughs> is also true. I'd rather leave it to the gods. This man does not want to stand up by me. You remember that the other name for the sword given by, uh, what was her name? Ezra? Elza. Elza. Um, Garn's sister was Twinkle Sparkle. Twinkle Sparkle! My ear perks. <laughs> Twinkle Sparkle. That is awesome. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Uh, oh no. Do you uh, recall our travels over here? Those uh, pink vials that we had? I'm not gonna lie. I am like totally mesmerized into this box. The last few things I remember is us living it up at Ma's. Uh, like we had a awesome concert. Arini rocked it out. Um, you did some sneaky boy stuff. I think there was a cookie and a plate involved. Oh, Bananas? Cookies. Probably? Um, yes, I totally, like, I thumb through, like, the back half of, like, a whole wad of what looks like jumbled post-it notes. And I'm like, uh, purple vials. Yes. The weird things we got from the ship that gave us... Such an interesting magical signature. Yeah. What about it? Also highly corrosive and burn things. Yeah. I uh, had to exhume and get rid of one because uh, I've got this um, vial filled with uh, the cobalt blood that we recently killed. I thought you would might want to tinker around and have some vampiric cobalt blood vial. So, and then I like my are you handing it to me? Yeah. I pause and like dive into a small satchel at my side and grab like a pair of really rustic gloves and just like grip it very gingerly and like oh, oh, oh. not only a cobalt blood sample, but a cobalt blood sample. How fresh is this from the body? Like seconds, minutes? What are we talking here? And like, holy cow, this is literally a huge sample. Uh, maybe 10 minutes. It's not fucking geo. I can probably do something. I like jam it, like I grab a fistful of ice and jam it in the bottom of my pack and like put the blood on ice in my pack. <laughs> okay. Just uh, don't make any of us vampires, all right? I mean, not intentionally, but no, no, ultimately, this is for scientific purposes. That's what they all say. I mean, is there a way that I can gift that from my inventory, or does he just have to fill that out? Um, he'll just have to add it'd be one vial of vampiric cobalt blood. Ooh. Okay. At least in this instance, um, I could add it as an extra item later on. But uh, this will work out better for today. So what's the party doing? Uh, well, I feel like we should probably head towards... It's not like late enough that anything would be closing yet, right? No, you're uh, you're still looking at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The clock down on the bottom I'm trying to keep as accurate as possible. So it would be 2 in the afternoon, but it's, it looks dark out. I mean, the sun has set for the morning period, and it'll come back in a couple hours again. Um, but, uh, everything's still, for the most part, open. I mean, 
Nothing really okay. closes at this time of day, especially on a market day. Okay, yeah, then I vote we start headed back towards Black Iron, Bla or Black Iron Blades. Lead the way. I just go. I was the same. Am I going alone or? <laughs> Everybody going with him. I'm like, yeah. I'm like waving a hand, kind of giving a partial thumbs up while like cataloging blood and trying to play with this puzzle at the same time. I'm very distracted. There's a lot of cool stuff in my hands. What? As the, uh, as the party makes their way back towards the Black Iron Blades, oh no, I want you to roll a perception check with disadvantage. Of course. <laughs> perception, disadvantage. Not focused at all. Oh no, when the party reaches the market square and makes their left turn to go to the Black Iron Blades, you in fact keep going straight and are currently wandering down a random street in Bridgehander. I... <laughs> At least you've begun I'm... walking down a random street. The um, way I see this is literally like the party makes a hard left and I just kind of like bump into someone who looks physically like from my peripheral the part of Bigtoon and just kind of like begin to randomly say, be like, yeah, Katie, I don't know what we're going to do about this puzzle. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I love puzzles, but this is totally weird. And I'm sure this person is like, what are you talking about? Um, would he, would he have been behind us all? I envision that with Ono being distracted, he probably would have brought up somewhere near the back of the party. But if okay. someone chooses to be next to him, so, I'll let them roll a perception to see if he still is with them at Black Iron Blades. I say, I mean, typically he and I stick together, you, so I feel like if, if you, anybody, it'd be me. You're right, you're right. Uh, you would have definitely heard me murmuring and said, like, I am literally just talking your ear off like I normally do. Of course, but you know that I always tune you out about halfway through, so. 100%. Uh, but, so, but <laughs> when leading... is the point of white noise, like, stop for you? <laughs> you're leading us to Black Iron, and my character being who he is, I'd most likely be in the back, or I'd even say Arini at that point. Actually, I'd say probably Aethros, but he's not here right now. Yeah, I'd say either me or Aethros are usually, like, rounding out the back if someone's on a mission to go somewhere. That being said, he's also, what, like, three inches tall? So he's not exactly in all of our sight lines. I'm not a, like, a fucking fey creature. <laughs> I'm a fucking gnome. Irini, I'll have, you, I'll have you roll a perception check. I'm a healthy three, three four. Just to, just to keep, keep her, see if you can see Ono uh, disappearing when you guys uh, make your turn. Perception. I am not yeah. on stilt, so yeah, at this point, yeah, I'm definitely, like, trudging through the snow. I mean, yeah, I mean, you would have been just far too consumed with that box to even think about your... I mean, I'm I'm, there. I'm happy to make a, a bad stealth check against that unless you wanted to just see me. I'm totally cool with that. So, yeah, I have... So, the, the party gets, like, you know, within 20 feet of Black Iron Blades, and it really... You realize that Ono has been getting kind of quiet. He's been talking this whole time, and he's been talking Big Tune's ear out, but Big Tune's been leading the party, so he hasn't been paying attention. He's been getting, Ono's been getting kind of quiet, and you turn, and you see Ono, maybe about 35 feet out, following this random person, calling them Kitty, as he's fiddling with both the blood in the box. I'm going to head towards him, kind of just put my hands on his shoulder and guide him back to the group as he continues mumbling on. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Oh, hey, Irene, I was just telling Kitty, uh, oh, oh, you're not Kitty. <laughs> Is this, what? does this person belong to you, weird antlered one? Yep, he's mine. Thank you. <laughs> I'm with her. She's it a would do well awesome to keep him under wraps sometimes. And he just, like, keeps walking, like, doesn't even stop. <laughs> you would slow like, down. <laughs> Like, I turn and, like, shrug and turn to Arini and go, so anyways, like I was saying, uh, you know, it, obviously it's not a pressure point system. At least I haven't found the pressure point system. And, uh, wait, where's everybody else? To the left back there. What are they doing over there? Come on, let's go get them. So, would, like... Would the rest of the party recognize this as a as a puzzle box, or is it just a box to us? Um, so 
Because that's, I mean, that's what I'm gathering anyway. I mean, you're basically looking at Ono holding, like, it, it's not like... The, the, a... the concept of a puzzle box, um, I'm going to have, okay, if everybody is curious about it, um, it would be Irini and Ibrin could roll standard. Big Tune, because of your travels, I'm going to say you would roll a uh, history check with disadvantage. I think, yeah, the only reason why you guys assume it's a puzzle box is because I have baseline deduced that this is a puzzle box, at least in my Gotcha. Eyes. Okay. Wait, so what am I rolling? It would be a history check. I'm sorry. And Standard I have, history for you. And I have disadvantage, and... right? Yes. Yeah, so Big Tune's the one who has disadvantage. Uh, Irini and Ibrin can roll standard because you both have been, ah. like, puzzle boxes themselves. Wow. Oh, nice. That's a good set of rolls, actually. So, puzzle Again. boxes are something that they're not the most uncommon thing. Um, they're usually forms of toys that people find, like, in, like, markets. But, um, uh, it would be Irini, you have seen. Um, like coming from the iris and pupil, like a really big hub in the lower end of Weird. Um, people do use these to sometimes store items. They're like a storage container at times. But you've never seen anything as like the craftsmanship and the ornate and the beautiful like writing along the sides and like texture. Everything that you've seen does not compare to the puzzle box that Ono has right now. I'm um, chewing on a corner of it. I'm literally, like, gnawing on a corner. But the idea of a puzzle box has existed for a while. Um, a lot, Like I said, a lot of times with toys, Irini, you know that sometimes people do make them as, like, travel size storage containers um, based off of what you've seen, but nothing you've seen compares. Do you like a, a form of, like, a tiny little safe where you'd keep, like, important things in it or just, like, whatever the heck you wanted in there? It can be... Uh, in your experience, it can be whatever a person wants and the craftsmanship usually determines how uh like how difficult they are to open like they're not something you can open with thieves tools or like lockpick but they're something that it, it takes a bit of skill sometimes and it really comes down to do you have that skill set like i'm physically like i'm imagining like kind of like the gif i kind of sent you the other day it's like a kind of it, it wooden ish box but it's gilded with like facets of metal and there are cuts in it that almost make it look uh like you know there is script and and runes carved in it intricately and delicately making these like fissures and patterns and swirls and i am just treating it as if it's like a fucking empty taco bell box and i am just shaking the shit out of it and like i just I just imagine I, Big Tune and I looking at each other and be like, oh, that's a pretty box. Right, right. Oh, Aethros would be... Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping he, like, rain mans it and just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> click, 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 and just hundred, pops it over. hundred fucking percent. Literally, <laughs> he's holding his picture book and he goes, oh, this is awesome. Click, 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 like a Rubik's Cube. He solves it, and I'm just like, ha! So if I've seen them before, just nothing like this, would I have any sort of idea on how to start opening it? Ooh, she did get a wicked roll. Yeah. God. So, that's a you, you did roll decently high. I'm just figuring out how much information I want to give you. Like, not even necessarily like, a, oh, I know how to open this thing, but like, uh, maybe like the first couple bits of it. I, I'm just imagining I, this is like one of those boxes like that Chris Ramsey opens on YouTube. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his work. <laughs> it's like these 45 step puzzle boxes. Like I was an only child living with one pair and I probably had a lot of free time on my hands. The, like, fun I fact, feel like Chris Ramsey guy, the new Doctor Strange movie, the puzzle piece was actually inspired by him. He just oh. found that out recently. That's sick. You would know, um, based off of what you've seen and, like, watched people do, because at times you were a bored child. It's a big hub for a lot of politics down where you're from, and sometimes that that can be annoying, depending on who you are and where you're at. Uh, but uh, you would know that um, basic puzzle boxes, like the super cheap ones that you can get at almost any market square down there, 
Um, sometimes those are, in fact, similar to like a Rubik's Cube, being able to open and just align the runes to the right spot. Sometimes they require magic to open, being able to essentially pour magic essence into some of these boxes. Um, sometimes it's a combination of both. Um, and the difficulty that they are to open, the, the more... Uh, the more challenging they are to open, generally the uh, one, the uh, more safety measures there are built into the box to prevent people from opening them on accident. Um, and then two, the longer between trying to open them it takes. So I guess in a, a box like this might require a little bit more investigation as to what rodent has to go, um, since really it hasn't really left Ono's between his mouth and hands, uh, yeah. this whole like, walk. I, I have, I assume she's like looking over what really anybody could do over my shoulder at my notes, and my notes are like, it's I've only started a page, and I mean you guys have traveled with me long enough. Like I've one page into an item, I haven't really technically made a full dent into investigating this. Like I haven't even done like like the DM said, I haven't even done magic on this. I've literally just been fondling the shit out of this. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna look at Ono and say, hey, that looks hmm. like something that I uh, saw a lot back in my hometown. Can I take a look at it? A hundred percent. And I, like, I gingerly hand it to Arini. Okay, I'll gently take it and kind of look it over like he did. Um, and I guess see if I recognize anything on it all right i want you are, are you how much time do you want to invest into doing this it determines what i have you do um i don't know i'd probably thoroughly look through it would you be it, I guess? doing this while the party is at black iron blades or are we all standing outside black iron blades watching you do this and i can certainly go inside i mean i can hang if, out here with arini i'll say if you guys want to you know, check this thing out. I, I can go talk to uh guy. Yeah, why don't you guys go get that situated? Is there a bench outside of Black Iron Blades that I can just sit on and take a slight rest and smoke my pipe? There is a bench outside Black Iron Blades, big enough for three people. I'll walk over with Big Tomb, uh, to Black Iron Blades and just tap on the shoulder. Hey, I'm, I'm just gonna take a rest out here for a little bit and Take a couple puffs of my pipe. If you need so anything, just give me a holler. Dust off the bench from snow and stuff. Hey, Thros, it sounds like you and me are going in. Unless you want to relax out here, too, I can take the head inside then. And he would, uh, he would look at the bench and he'd, uh, he'd look at you. No, I, I, th I think it'd be more fun to follow you inside. Sounds good. Let's go. This scary man with the red eyes is out there. <laughs> all right so when you go into black iron blades um irini i'm gonna have you so you're gonna make two rolls for me um yeah. because you're taking time and you're looking this over i want you to make a investigation check and i also want you to make an arcana check i'm giving you the help action and i'm also going to give you guidance so you have advantage plus a d4 I want you to choose which role you want for each before you make your rolls. I'm going to give you one. Do help action for one and the guidance for the other. Which one would you like the advantage on? Um. Uh, it's worse. Can I do a general perception for the area? Same. Yes, you can. Uh, Ibrin. What are your stats? Mine are, mine are the same, so I guess I don't care either way. Okay. Oh shit, somebody's paying attention. <laughs> okay, so Arcana. I, I guess, guess I'll just Yeah, if if it'll help you, the investigation is like, you know, physically analyzing, looking over the box. The Arcana would be like do you like looking into the uh, magic side of uh what you're investigating. If it helps you make that decision. Okay, I guess I'll I'll do the the D four on the Arcana and the advantage on the uh, investigation. Nice. Okay. 
Oh, that was so close. Okay. So, um, as you are, like, you're looking over this box with Ono, who's very, very excited. I just envision him big-eyed, like, watching you uh, look this whole thing over. Um, you Every do see that... her hand stops moving, I write notes on the other side of the box, like, with paper. And then she moves it. I'm like, Ugh! okay. So you're able to, uh, like, the box itself is separated into, really, it's, like, four segments, or four segments on the top, four segments at the bottom, so a total of eight uh, segments. Um, and you're able to rotate the box um, itself. You hear clicking noises coming from the inside. Um, however, uh, with your arcana, you, like, you don't, you see that you have to, it's a combination of both physical movement and imbuing it with magic that might be required to open it. Um, and as you uh, look over the box, you see that wherever Ono was biting on the box, there were no marks left um, from his teeth. It appears that this box has some form of protection around it um, to prevent it from being damaged uh, just an everyday handle. And uh, every time you click the box, you do see a shimmer of uh, green, green, blue turquoise type light uh coming from in the cracks where the uh tumblers move so every time it clicks you see a, a shimmer of light not the entire box just coming from in the center of the box itself um no more than maybe two inch spread uh shooting out from the core but uh you yourself are unable to open it just in this uh small instance here it appears that it will require more magic than what you yourself put into it, if any at all. Um, it's it's a combo of both. Is she saying okay. that? Yeah, I'm saying poop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? Like, what the poop? Uh, uh. So I guess I, w I would tell Ono, um, so this isn't one like I've really seen before. This one's a combination of, you know, knowledge and magic to get this one open and it's not in my skill set uh your hand like her hands are still in the box at this point at this point yes okay so i'm assuming in my mind's eye she's got her hands on like the left and right of the box i slap my hands on the top and the bottom of the box and i just dump a prestidigitation into it like i'm like okay and just blindly, I try to chill the box. I mean, like, you know, thematically, you know. And, and I just... Her hands begin to get cold. Does anything happen? Dun, dun, dun. All right. Let me... Give me one second here. <gasps> I'm just taking a little puff of my uh, pipe while I'm watching this happen next to me essentially I, i've i've opted not to sit on the bench and kind of like affixed my stilts in a weird like hammocky kind of way across from arini so <laughs> we're, just, we're just playing with the puzzle box in the street while i'm kind of sitting in this weird like stilt bjorn kind of thing across from arini <laughs> I just imagine him sitting on that bench and me and you are just standing there like cartoon eyes wise looking at the, the glitter in the box. Oh, 100%. I want to see if I'm this a... uh, module thing works. So tell me if you get a notification on your screen in like two seconds. Okay. I'm essentially just resting. I'm looking at the overall area, seeing if I see anything. I, I did. And I'm basically just playing supervisor with you guys. Oh! Oh! Wow. Wow, that was wow. Yeah, what's up? Irene, did you get a, a notification on your screen at all for a saving throw? Uh uh. Ah, balls. balls. Okay, I'll have to fix that going forward. Uh, I want you to make an intelligence saving throw for me. Okay, intelligence saving throw. And then I'll get to what you're uh, experiencing or what you see, Ibrim, in a second. Solid. Fucking Ark of the Covenant hair blast back. Yes! Already! Okay, so. That was almost a one, too. As Ono, like, 
uh, conjures that arcane energy into his hands and uh, slaps them on the box to try and you start trying to chill the box, right? Yeah, I mean, like thematically, I'm like, I, it's cold outside. I might as well just lean into it and like I palm on the top, palm on the bottom, and I continue with the cantrip. Okay, as you uh, as you place your you slap your palms on the top and the bottom of the of the box, it's gonna uh, get cold. The both of you, both hands on the box, you feel this outburst of uh, this raw arcane energy shoot from the box about a ten foot radius around you. And you feel as though if you weren't innately, like, attuned in some aspects to the arcane yourself, you might have been uh, either shot back or the box launched from your hands. Um, both of you avoid taking any form of damage. Uh, it appears that the box did not react prop uh, nicely to the prestidigitation. Okay. And I, like, I assume we both kind of remove hands i go quickly to notes and like okay presentation not the best ah uh, okay uh well, it did something yeah it did ibrin are you looking for anything in particular right now or are you just in general scanning the area for anything weird in general scanning the area overall relaxing and playing supervisor to oh no and arini out here essentially since aethros and big tomb are inside I'm assuming if things head south, those two could handle things before we get in there. And if things were to happen in the street, um, oh no, and Arini have backup with me just sitting out here. So, you okay. just keeping an eye out for Tweedledee and Tweedledum. So, you uh, take a puff from your pipe, you know, sitting, trying to relax a little bit after, uh, you know, the encounter that you had in the alleyway, uh, thinking over, like, you know, how. Your daggers, you know, either didn't have as much of an effect as what you were hoping, or in general, fighting the vampiric kobold, analyzing that in your mind. Uh, you take time and you look around just to see if there's anything else that you need to be worried about in this town, since this wasn't something posted on the job board. And uh, you don't really see anything that's, like, crazy out of the ordinary. You see some of the townspeople that were on the square uh, kind of making their way up and down the streets, uh... Uh, those of them who might have seen you yourself in the, you know, in the crowd giving you a nod. Um, you see uh, journeying back and forth from the square to neighboring areas, uh, members of Torg uh, Torg's party, the uh, the orcish fellow and the tiefling primarily. Occasionally you do see the Sephic, um, though he seems to disappear into the crowd and you have a harder time tracking him. Um, but he, it's after a little while, he comes back from wherever he was and journeys back towards their stand. Um, doesn't appear there's anything malicious at this point in time. Um, but there's really nothing crazy going on right now. It just seems to be like we're at the end of peak shopping uh, period of the day. So the market square is slowly fading out. People are journeying more down the streets to return to their houses or business establishments. Um, it's pretty, pretty normal. I guess would be the best word to describe it right now. Yeah, it's like people watching at the mall. It's pretty much what I expected. Pretty much. And you get to see all sorts of weird crowds of people in Bridge Hand here. It's a lot like a Walmart where you see every person under the sun. Um, so people of most races, you'll find at least one or two venturing around. Um, at least the uh, the tamed races, I guess as I call them, like the elven based and uh, like the orcish and dwarves and stuff like that. Oh, that was quiet. Well, it's not quiet because I'm like exclaiming with glee. Well, you're right. Quiet, quiet's <laughs> a bad term. It's just it's calm. Big Tune might have to make a I don't, maybe make a perception check for a squeal outside of the door because I am excited. Uh, so at this point, oh no, let's put the box away for a moment and see what Big Tune's up to on the inside. I'm I'm hammering down notes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally, yeah, absolutely. Uh, box holding, possibly good. Cantrip level, still an anomaly. Prestidigitation, a no. And in this instance, I'm going to pan over to Big Tune and Aethros, who are inside the uh, Black Iron Blades. So, Big Tune, as you um. Uh, before, you know, like, I guess same time when the party's investigating this puzzle box, 
you find yourself, uh, you enter the Black Iron Blades, and once again, you feel that enormous temperature difference from, like, the negative 20 that it is outside to, like, a calm 70 degrees. Not quite enough to send you into shock, but, uh, enough to really heat your bones very quickly. As, uh, Elza is kind of standing at the counter, you hear the sounds of, uh, hammering going on in the back. Um, a light hammer, not so much something... Like, you can tell he's not crafting a long sword if he's crafting anything at all. And uh, Elza gives you a look. So did you do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. I motioned to Aethros for him to pull out the head. And he eagerly, like, pulls it out and holds it by, like, uh, like the hairs <laughs> on the top of the cobalt's head. I got the thing. It's dead. <laughs> like, the sword worked wonders to, uh, to help us do that, too. Well, that's always a good thing. Uh, I'm glad to see the vampires were what we thought they were, some form of undead creature. You can tell based off of the cauterization uh, right at the neck there. And you, like, if those, like, looks down puzzled, you see that it's not dripping blood. Like, the, uh, between the, the radiant and the fire damage, it, uh, cauterized the, uh, the blood flow dripping down. So, uh, where am I, where am I supposed, am I supposed to give this to you? And, like, Aether's, like, confused as to, like, what, we, what he needs to do. Well, I mean, I just, we just needed it slain. I think the city might actually want the head as proof. And, uh, you hear, uh, you hear Garn, like, stop hammering in the back. And he, like, comes up to the front desk. Uh, a bit of, uh, black soot on his face. Pulls up goggles that he was wearing. Sons of a bitch, you did it! Yeah, yeah, this sword worked well. Um, I knew it. I knew it. Elza, I think you owe me 20 gold pieces, and she, like, begrudgingly pulls out a pouch. I was hoping you would wait till after they left to make this known. And then Garn looks at you. She didn't think you were going to come back. But, uh, I'm glad you did. It makes me, it fills my heart with a lot of good, knowing that there's someone out there who could maybe stand the chance out in those wilds. If it's any proof, we we really we really did not struggle at all with this thing. It it was you know it was quite the simple task. So well, that's good to hear, and it's one less threat that the people of Brinchan don't have to worry about. Now, now, wh what will you have us do about these missing ores? Well, first things first. Uh, you see, Garn pull out the fifty gold that you gave him as like a holding price and like he gestures his hand so he can have the sword back you sure I can't keep it for now <laughs> no I'm, 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 he, he, roll a persuasion with disadvantage okay. <laughs> it, get that nat 20 get the nat 20 crit? twice that's not nah, a nat okay. 20. <laughs> not even a combined 20. Garn shakes his head at you. Sorry, lad. But it's a bigger risk losing that out in the wild than having it wait for you when you get back here with my ore. That's and the fair. guards currently won't let you leave with it. They all know what the sword looks like and what you look like because you're pretty distinguishable. A deal's What's that deal. mean? You're a giant cat. <laughs> He's a proud beast. How dare you? Yeah. If you, you complete my quest for me, the sword's yours. I'm a man of my word. But if you're still up to the task, I can give you more information about it. Absolutely. So, there were four people. And like, Wait, he, like, looks to the two of you. There were more of you. Do you want everybody to hear this, or do you just want to hear it? At this point, you must have heard me squeal. Yeah, I would say we're getting close to squeal time. <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose I can, I can, you know, go bring them inside. They're just outside taking a small break. Uh, I, I got it, I got it. Uh, Aethros would be like, I'll, I'll get them for you, don't worry. 
And he, like, runs to the door and, like, pushes it open. Hey, guys. Guys, we're talking in here. You, you should come be part of conversation. I think something good might happen. I, I mean, I, we're, oh, we're doing very important scientific work out here. I mean, plus he's like halfway through, oh, we are almost done with your pipe. Yeah, let's go inside. I'll extinguish my pipe, put it away and hold the door open for Arena and then walk in after. I'll walk in while like rubbing my hands together, trying to warm him up from that puzzle box. Oh, yeah. I pressed to digitate your hands warm. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, I forgot. I was so focused on notes. And uh, I guess Aethros, I mean, he probably wouldn't act on it based off of my experience with him. But uh, he would see like where the snow was all kind of blown away in that 10 foot radius um, mm. where you two were standing like right when he opened up the door. He would have missed the action, but saw the aftermath and just oh, uh... disregarded it and just told everybody to come inside. I wonder what the general populace was thinking at the time of the like air explosion and then my exalted gleeful like squeal they were very I confused i imagine her was hair walking by. blown back over her horns and i'm just like yeah that was awesome so i just hoped that somebody was walking by and just got absolutely just thrown into the wall <laughs> my cabbages <laughs> right uh, is everybody joining? Yeah, here. yeah. Yeah. So the party uh, goes inside. Um, Ebrin kind of pulling the door closed behind everybody. And uh, you see Garn and you see Elza uh, both standing in the, the front common area uh, just in front of the counter. Big enough space for all of you, but still rather small. Um, maybe like a, a 20 by 20 uh, room. Not very large. And uh, Garn uh, pulls out a piece of parchment from uh, from his back pocket, and he holds it out to uh, maybe to Big Tune since Big Tune was here first. The information's all in here. I was going to post something on the board, but I'm glad you all came. To make a long story short, there were four people who they don't necessarily work here, but they're from our family. Who are supposed to bring go gather the ore from up in the Dwarven Valley by Kelvin's Cairn and bring it back down. Um, the ore itself was ready to go. It would have been a quick trip, but uh, they were supposed to arrive about three three days ago and we still haven't heard anything from them either about it being delayed or, you know, anything at all. So we're a little concerned on um, whether or not they're going to, whether or not they're even alive. Um... Uh, the last time you said uh, it, they, uh, the trip takes about two weeks. Was that right? I wrote that down next to this note. The trip back and forth. Yeah, it would be about yeah, it's about ten days. So for it would be two weeks. In this okay. Campaign. Okay. Um, I was just trying to check my notes again. Yeah, about five days there, five days back. Sick. Okay. Um, so four people in total. Their family, like family friends. The, uh, know that, like shop hands Elza would uh, chime in their direct relation we're all part of the Battlehammer family here in oh. Bridgehander okay so I guess you could say they're our cousins of sorts okay. close cousins not distant cousins there were four okay. of us um, the leader of the group was a woman named Hruna H-R-U-N-A heavy smoker older woman dwarf obviously um, she was pioneering our party up there. There's three more of them, uh, men who went with them. I can't remember who, I think. And, like, she would look over to Garn. I think Korix was one of them, too, wasn't he? And Garn would, like, look back at her. Yeah, Korix went with her. That's an Obak. And she would, like, he would look to her. Uh, why did we send Obak with them? And then, like, uh, Elza would, like, shrug and be like, I don't know. He said something about wanting to go. Seeing more people from the valley. It's been a while. And you're like, yeah, it, it's, it's been a while. Anyway, they were supposed to be back here about three days ago. Haven't seen them. Um, haven't heard about anything at all on whether or not they've been delayed or if something 
hit the fan and they lost it. But, uh, they, uh, they're somewhere between here and Kelvin's Cairn. Exact location, I, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to say. The route they take, and he would, like, pull out, uh, um, he'd pull up a map of his own, because you all have a map of Ten Towns and the Icewind Dales, um, in your, someone from your party does. I think it might have been, I don't know who has it right now, it might have been Bigtoon, who I think was given the actual map. Yeah, um, it was, you said it was kind of large, so I think we had to give it to Bigtoon. Yeah. Probably add that to my, <laughs> Large map of ten, uh, large map of the Icewind Dales. Would that be? Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. But... Yeah, you could put it under loot or treasure or whatever you wanted to put it under. Um, and he would like point to. Oh my god! Let me go to my map of Icewind Dales. He would uh, pretty much draw almost a straight line carving it around the uh, the three large mounds between Bryn Shander and Calvin's Cairn. Um, he draw you a route that they normally take, which is essentially from Bryn Shander, you head uh, uh, be northeast, upward, and then you carve left around the uh, the three large mounds, and it's like a straight shot into the Dwarven Valley. But it takes a long time because the the weather out there is really bad. And the only uh, the 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 suggested route is through the Dwarven Valley. There really is no other way. Well, the Dwarven Without... Valley's. About where you want to go. It's civilized there, at least, for the most part. Um, oh, okay. We have family who lives there, too. Um, the Battlehammer family's been up here for a long time, but the Silverstream family is also up there, and the Ice Vein family. And we don't hate each other, don't get me wrong, but uh, if you if you are doing this for me, if you find the Battlehammer family settlement up there, they'll take care of you. It's the second family you mentioned? I got Silverstream? Silverstream, I. And the other one was Ice Vein. Ice Vein. Oh, okay. This sounds lovely. They usually make themselves more to the northern end of the Dwarven Valley, closer to the Cairn than anybody else. Um, it's like their specialty up there. There's a form of ice up there that they're trying to mine. The last I heard, which was a couple weeks back, but uh, our family is usually one of the first ones you run into when you enter Special the Dwarven Valley. Ice? Like magical ice. That's what they made it sound like. Something, it's a darker color than other ice itself, and it gives off a arcane aura. I like Nudge Arini's, uh, what would essentially be like her cav. I'm like, that sounds so awesome. <laughs> so with that in mind, are you still interested? Yeah. Heck yeah. With, uh, I suppose I should only... give you information about how many ingots I was expecting. I mean, that would uh, potentially be good. I know we're looking essentially for four people. Uh, uh, hopefully bringing them back alive or with information of their whereabouts, preferably the latter. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, what are we expecting at least in weight or individual units of cargo? The total number of ingots I was expecting to have when I, when they came here. And he, like, pulls out a, a piece of paper that's, like, his order that he had for them, like a copy of it. Um, exactly 287 in total. Whoa! The, oh, alright. It's a lot of weight. And, uh... We had a lot of dogs that were sent up there to help pull it back. You said 287? 287 ingots. 280. Okay. Uh, I love the unique number. Uh, holy cheap. I'm like doing the math in my head. That's a lot of weight. It's not too bad. Once you get, uh, once you hit over the ice with some dogs, they can pull that. No problem. The ingots themselves, any like gestures, the ingots themselves are. No more than about four to five inches long and about two inches across. They're small ingots. Geographical question? Yeah. Is Kelvin's Karen elevated higher or lower than uh, where we currently are? Uh, significantly higher. So potentially we could be negotiating like a downhill slalom if I manufacture the appropriate 
uh, transportation? Hypothetically, yes. I'm making a huge brand new note, and it just looks like a wicked fucking sled. You don't want to make individual snowboards for all of us? I, 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 that's, I have a side note. I, there's, I'm thinking expanding, extrapolating. I, I'm essentially doing on paper like the Jarvis explosive diagram of like me trying to do <laughs> a cart to negotiate the weight and then steering. And I'm also like, I pull out a side note of like, uh, of an already very well drawn out, actually, you may have actually seen this, Big Tune, of like an idea for like, a, it's like a hull of a boat, essentially. And I'm like comparing notes and I'm like, I can kind of take this idea and then I'm gonna move that from here and the 287, that's gonna be the pounds. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, oh man, okay. I'm gonna make goggles. Do you have glass? And you hear like Garn chuckle. Do I have glass? How much you need, boy? Oh, uh, everybody has two eyes. I, I, like, I make a quick assessment of everybody's eyeballs. Uh, I could probably do with a sheet, and I could cut it myself. I should have glass cutting tools somewhere. Uh, I feel like it'd be part of your like tinker tool stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, what I would assume is enough enough material for me to because i still have leather so i could potentially make leatherette goggles for the ever for the party uh a, oh, ah, a sheet of glass probably something by th three by three possibly i don't think i need any anything larger and he would uh take a moment he'd look in the back and uh he would come back out his hands empty it's not that I don't have a sheet that big, but I could... I'll take, I'll take spares. Like, if you have glass cutoffs that... You know, scraps. I can take scraps. Oh, my God. If you have scrap glass, like, I'll take that. He need, he'd shake his head. The scraps that I have aren't going to be big enough for you, but I can prepare something for you for tomorrow morning. I could have you a 3x3 three three sheet. Oh, that would be more than enough. Uh, if, 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 if you can make it so that, you know, we're not sharing around one huge sheet. I mean, if it's more convenient for you, you can just get a nice slab of glass. And then if you wouldn't mind cutting it down to maybe paperish size, uh, you know, something I can stack and cut later easily on the road. He would nod. I can do that for you, boy. Oh, yes. And I like mindlessly dip in and throw like two gold on the table. And he would, uh, he would push one of them back towards you. This is the least I can do for you helping me out, at least now. You know, to help you on your journey. But, uh, like I said, the sword is yours if you bring back my ingots. If you can't get all of them, I just need at least about three quarters of them. So, if you can't get all 287, I need as many of them as you can get for me. Either way, about at that point, I can make back my profit no problem. I, we it'll be our utmost to one recover your shop hands and two try to recover the whole of your cargo unspoiled and him and elza would both nod appreciate it we really do elza would chime in there may not be immediate family like a sister but we treat our cousins the same family family family's family that's right is there uh, anything else you need from us in the meantime? Um, he'll have your glass for you for tomorrow morning. I assume you're going to stay in town tonight. I would have a hard time believing you wouldn't, but, uh, you know, you're, you're your own group of people. Yeah, we have other business to attend to tonight, so this works out, actually. <laughs> and uh, Garn would nod. Oh, good. We usually close up shop here after the sun is set for the second time and we always enjoy going to the north look for some drinks with scram sacks uh, so if you're looking for a place to go tonight to hang out I know he usually has a couple rooms available and he's probably one of the best places to get drinks in this town so don't be a stranger 
It's actually where we were planning on going anyway, so we may see you there. Man, great minds think alike, guys. They do indeed. Well, if there's nothing else you need from us right now, we're going to get back to work here. And uh, Garn's like, aye, I'll get working on your glass here soon. Um, I'll have it ready for you. I got a couple more things I got to finish first. A couple tools needed for other parts of the town. But uh, no it'll be done for you. I, I appreciate that. No rush at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from an artisan to artisan, I totally understand and very much appreciate let me give you a nod. Well, until later, then. Boop, boop. Gotta fix my gold. Alright, cool. Onward! For, for the sake of it, um, I, you know, I, I unequipped it, but if, if it'll make it easier, I'm just gonna leave it there. You know, just pretend that it's not part of my inventory, the Flare Glimmer. Yeah, we can do that if you want to. Otherwise, I can literally just drag it back into your inventory later. It takes two seconds. Whatever you want to do, then. Cut to us being level 20. He's forgotten about it, and you pull it, <laughs> you pull it out of the bag of holding at the last minute. Yeah, I'll leave it. Up. You can keep it in your inventory. I'll just leave it unequipped. That's fine. Yeah, I just, yeah, I unequipped it, so. Okay. So what's the party doing? Um. Duh, man. Aethros well, is still yeah. holding the head like... Yeah, where are, we, where are we going with this? Oh, yeah, we should sure go to the make it into center a of town. <laughs> well, speaking of, he this should be here friend. now. He is here. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Um. Well, yeah, I think we, we need to turn town. this in in the center of town. <laughs> So we'll see what they want to do with it after we take it there. What time of day is it right now? Where's the clock? I forgot to... Hold on, where's that damn clock? Yeah, I is that accurate right now? lost mine too. Yeah, sometimes it gets lost in translation. Um, it is currently uh, like about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, awesome. So it would totally be appropriate to do business right now. Yeah, let's rock that thing inside and get paperwork done. See what Towns, uh, town hall wants for this sucker and get a drink so I can take some notes. Aethers, look at this box. It's a box. I, oh, I should have guessed he was going to say that. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> roll perception with a triple disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Man, You're going to need to roll with All double, right. triple secret disadvantage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. So, let's see. <laughs> I basically, or... like, shove a, like, an ornate box relatively in your, like, groin region. A, like a gilded kind of wooden, a goldish box with very cool intricate designs on it. Uh, it's got like facets and stuff on it. Very. I cool. grab it and now it's on the side of it and try and listen to see what it sounds like inside the box. Say I shake he it. sees it. Maybe this is his Rain Man moment. I'm literally like <laughs> smiling yeah. right now. I have like let him have it. I've got all my notes out at this point. Yes. Since <laughs> Ben, since Aethros grabbed the box and the head just plopped and is now on the floor, I'll pick it up and hold it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a loud squish uh, noise as the head falls to the floor. Um, Aethros, as you knock on cool. the box, it makes no noise back at you. Yeah, I tried shaking the crap out of it. It's magic or something. Do we want to... Oh, it's really magic. Wait, do we want to open the box? I mean, eventually. I mean, I'm enjoying the novelty of kind of like fondling with it and kind of fidgeting and, you know, doing weird stuff I have the it. box in one hand and I grab my Warhammer. I'm like, me smash? I mean, I'm I'm t I'm making a new line of notes. Uh, active violence. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Test one. Before that happens, right, are I we still inside or outside? Yeah, that's a good question. Are we inside or are we outside the Black Iron Blades at this point? Oh, I, at this point, I hope if he's about to make a swing, we have stepped outside of the establishment. Yeah, no, yeah. the safety uh, of all. We should be outside. Okay. If but, you show me the box inside. 
We we most definitely made our way outside. I just envision the party pushing Aethros out the door. As yeah. He's like getting ready to swing at it. Move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna... More swing room. More swing room. Uh, yeah. I've got the head, so and I'm just going to take like a good 15 steps back before Ben hits it with the Warhammer. I, yeah, I have no concept of what happened out there, so um, I, I will not move. Knowing what happened out there, I'm going to stand behind Big Tune. Okay. But like, hear my head out so I can still watch. Okay, if you are going to make an attack against the uh, box, I want you to... Actually, I don't know if you have to, you might not have to target anything, but I want you to just make an attack with your hammer. All right. Uh, if, okay, uh, question. Just a hypothetical question before you make this roll, Aethros. If I am standing, this is hypothetical, if I am standing in between Aethros's legs, trying my best, since I am very small, to not impose any disadvantage if we have the same effect as last time can i negate both of our or at least one of our saving throws if i do a shield to kind of barrier both of us you can certainly try oh i love those words no, i'm good <laughs> Fuck! So if, I, I, if I'm in between his legs, I am literally throwing up shield at this point. So, <laughs> Aethros. Do I miss the box? As you, <laughs> like, two hands bring the hammer down, trying to hit this box, you go straight into the ground right next to it. Oh, God. Thank, thank, oh, thank the gods. Uh, try number two, and I go immediately what? again. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Paul Bunyan, I slide the box slightly to the left. <laughs> what did you say, uh, Aethros? Is there any, like, disadvantage or other bonuses, or is um, that, that to add to this roll, or just roll? I would do it with, so, I would say you could do this one without your proficiency bonus. So it would be whatever, like, it would just be a d20 plus three. So yeah, strength. Yes. Okay, oh, oh, oh no. Let's see, if, this, let's see if it works this time. <laughs> Test two. Subject Aethros. Making swing to hit. First one missed. Second one. Okay, hopefully. Uh, did you get a request on your screen for a saving throw? Yeah. Oh. oh how close were you to Aethros? Uh, oh no. I'm I'm still in between his legs. Okay. <laughs> I, okay. I'm I, right. Yeah. I'm lit. I'm going to. If it's reacting, I'm using a reaction. I'm casting shield. Okay, give me one second. Yeah, you said before it was like what, like a ten foot radius, so or a ten foot diameter. There are going to be like two dents of like non, like a, a, like very much exposed ground where we're doing this in front of this shop. So I'm going to get this the first it time. Be... With advantage this time, I'm giving you advantage because you have shield up too. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm 13. Okay, Aethros. Right. As you missing smack the hammer. Him. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was say with Aethros missing the first time and lining up to the second one, I'm gonna back up another 10 feet, being 25 feet away. You kind of gauge from the size of the circle from the last one. Maybe I should take a couple steps back. Right. Yeah, I mean, I like, I. You know, I was not out there for the first time, so I wouldn't have necessarily backed away. I don't know where you, like... Oh, neat. Oh, he's another person no. gets to make a saving throw. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not no. trying to, like, punish myself, but, like, realistically... No. I'm still hiding behind him. <laughs> behind like, realistically. Like, behind, uh... Behind... Standing behind Big June. Okay, okay. Hold on. The middle of the street. It's the middle of the afternoon. What is oh, a this band is gonna be great. Of ridiculous adventurers? Oh, I'm do? sure it is. Guys, let's fuck with this magical artifact right here <laughs> in the middle of town. Hell yeah! So you were... ask me twice, okay, so right? people, uh, Big Tune, did you get a thing requesting a Constitution saving throw from you? I didn't see one. Okay, 
Then just roll you... a con save for me. Standard roll. Okay. No, he didn't get it. He doesn't have to do it. Irene, did you get one too? <laughs> or no? Yes! Big two. I was very scared. I saw that one. <laughs> Kitty is strong. Was... Irene, Kitty's in strong. case you didn't get a request, um, it might not have, might not have went through. Uh, do a con save with advantage. Quick Where's question. So on constitution. the attributes page, it'd be constitution, and then you can roll it with advantage. Question. Saving throw. Since we were within there a is. close proximity, does my shield, my level one shield, do anything to the box? You could just with normal one, right? Uh, you, you would have advantage. You advantage. Have your shield have deflects advantage. some damage into Big Tomb and then. <laughs> deflect damage as much as I am trying to contain it. Like, uh, <laughs> I definitely don't want anyone to get hurt. Was my focus. Okay, so Aethros, your hammer coming down this time and hitting the box. As your hammer hits this box, you see a. Uh, a shine of bright white light shoot out from the box Yikes. itself uh, no more than a flash as like it coated the runes from the box itself but raw physical energy pushes let's see who does it all push it pushes Aethros and Ono and Irini all of you get pushed 10 feet backwards and oh. you're pushed out of this uh, circle. Big Tune, however, you kind of hunker yourself down and you're able to withstand this. And uh, Ibrin, you watch as everybody gets pushed away. However, compared to the last burst of energy, this one was significantly louder. As it sounds almost like metal on metal ringing out like a bell or like two pieces, like two things clashing into each other, even though the box is made of wood. Um, which turns a lot of people who are walking their heads kind of turd and they see this like blast radius of snow shot outward next to another blast radius of snow from I squeal. like 15 20 minutes ago and uh you see that in the distance um actually you know what uh ebrin roll a perception check for me i want to see what I, can't carry my, I can't carry my 18 from earlier over no nah, it's a different say scene. i'm just looking around like what happened to you guys? <laughs> Normal or advantage? Because I'm out of the blast radius. I'm going to give you advantage on this one. Oh. Nice to Yo! Oh, that 20. Let's go. So Yo, the... he sees your DM screen. What's up? So the ringing of this noise, uh, and the people my beard staring. Is majestically flowing from the wind. <laughs> You you look in the distance, you see Town Hall, um, you know, across the way a couple hundred feet, and you see what appears to be four guards, weapons loaded, running out of the Town Hall into your, like, down the road to your location in a, a bit of a hurry. They're about 300 feet away. Uh, guys, you just alerted the guards, and now we got four of them coming, so... We either split I or would say tell them a good excuse. Yeah. I would say get up, so more run to north. north. Did, did Aetheros get hurt at all at this point? No. None of you have taken damage. You were he all wants just to hit it again like a golf ball. The way I imagine it is <laughs> like that oh my God. as soon as you <laughs> slapped it, like as soon as you made contact and I saw, this is the way I see it in my head, I saw it was a bad reaction, I tried to cast shield around it and we got that visceral reaction is the way I'm seeing it. Yeah, that'd be a good way of seeing it. I'm basically going to yell at the party that the guards are coming and run to North Look and then I'll go to Town Square with the head. It's the fuzz. I pick up the box, I jam it in the box in my pouch, and I go, Aethros, amazing test. Let's cheese it. <laughs> Scooby Doo style. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to hit it again. <laughs> Next time, test two later. Test three later, actually. Oh, all right, fine. As long as you're not trying to sneak away, Ibran, I would, I would follow you, seeing as, you know. I'm the one that slayed the beast officially. Like I dealt the killing blow. Yeah, that's fine. Just pick up and nonchalantly walk away. 
you're gonna wait charles where are you going with him so you're, you're gonna try to nonchalantly like walk give me, away hold on give me two seconds hold yeah. on uh yeah, how, what is every, okay so i know uh ibrin and big tune are gonna go to the town square that leaves try. Irini, or try to. That leaves Irini, Ono, and Atros. Well, I'm okay. currently sitting on, my, I'm sitting on the ground rubbing my butt from the fall. Um, I pull out, a, as we're walking away, I pull out like a small. Oh no, this is no, never mind. That's a, that's that's even weirder. Fuck. Uh, ah, God, you can't mend snow back into place. That's weird. Uh, could I, could I ray of frost the ground and kind of just kind of make the bare ground back to like snow? Would you like, kind of you know, finagle that? I would say that if you ray of frosted the ground, you might not be able to make it look exactly as it was before. Like it would look like something happened, but it would look a lot less suspicious. Now it's just an ice skating rink. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, it, it's essentially like the 10 foot diameter that we blasted is my ray of frost filling that 10 foot diameter. So, I mean, if anybody sees anything, yeah, they're going to be like, how the hell did this big chunk of ice get here? I, eh? less suspicious. I ray of frost the ground and let's boogie. Okay, so you cast out Ray of Frost, and you kind of coat the the bare ground with the uh, with the ice type uh, coating, and then take off down your which way you're running to the north. Look, are we going to Town Hall? Are we gonna like pass the cards? Yeah, how like, are, where are people going? Honestly, yeah. From from my understanding, Ebert and I are going to the Town Hall, and you guys were gonna just because there are. What, which way are they? Are they coming from Town Square? They're coming from Town yeah. Square. So yeah, I, as, as I understand it, at least so far, the rest of y'all were going to go away from them and start heading towards the north to the North Look. Yeah. So those three are gonna go to the North Look, try to lose the guards. You and I are gonna go to Town Square, but I was also gonna ask the guards like, "Hey, where do I turn this in? I'm oh, supposed to collect some money." Gonna... Kind of be a diversion gonna, a little bit i was, I was going to ask you if you wanted to try to sneak by or if distract. if you do that if i love that suggestion if you do that could i tap you on the calf and be like good luck and give you guidance as we're running away in the opposite direction i'm already about 25 feet away from you though so unless you can guidance me from that far no i have to be next you have to touch you unfortunately not you can touch me are you like right next to me and running back? Oh, I I guess no because yeah, you guys got blown back and I just stood still. I was like, huh? What? Like yeah, I assume us splitting up is literally there's a ten foot gap between us and we're just kinda like, you guys go this way, we go this way, and then I ran across the ground and in the absence of like normality where there is magic, we split. Can I cast Bardic Inspiration on them as I'm like just sing and run away? Yo! You could. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'll I'll take that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's got to be on one of us, correct? Not it has both. to be. Well, if she wanted to spend like 12 seconds doing it, she could cast it on both of you. I think that would be the rest of your inspiration for the day then. Unless you only uh, have one left. I couldn't remember if you had one or two left after last night's, or last time's combat. I don't know. Well, I, I feel it, like we're... I think, I think up. you had two. So I would say if you wanted to cast it on both, you could. And it would be just at the edge of your range when you got done. So you'd be like, uh, what is Bardus Inspiration's range? Is it 30 feet or 60 feet? Hey. You said what? 30 or 60? It's 60. Oh, yeah. That's what my thing. Okay. I would say by the time you finish casting the second one, it would be right at the edge of your 60 foot range. So they would have yeah. a D6 to add to each, uh, each of them could have one D6 to add to one of the rolls. In it, Arini. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna cast it on both of them, bring up my Leer and kind of like skip slowly away while singing. Okay. I imagine Big and I will look back towards the group running away and being like, 
Wow, that was a weird blast. And yeah, so they're running up and like, hey, we take this to town square, right? Uh, just so I make sure, Aethros, are you heading with uh, Ono and Irini then, or what is Aethros doing? He's with them. Uh, I'm looking at both of them, like in that same spot. Like, uh, I don't know who to go with, and then I decide to go with the person with the magic box. Okay. Choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the, you three, Irini, Ono, and Aethros are taking off. Uh, I'm assuming down to the north look, or that direction anyway, and. Uh, Okay, uh, Big Tune and Ebrin, you head towards Town Square. And uh, I would say you're now within uh, about 100 feet uh, and closing of the guards. And you hear one of them shout out to, uh, to anybody who's running past because they appear to have lost sight of the group like visibly at this point. Where did they go? Did anybody see what happened here? We heard a loud noise. And like just like just people are like, I have no fucking idea. Oh. And they just like keep going. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Um, as we're as they're kind of saying that, and like we're closing in on each other, I would imagine. Um, just kind of put up like our like the two hands, like the the hold up, whoa, 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 and just be like, hey, hey, don't, don't worry. Like all that was just for this, and kind of gesture to the head in his hand, like we were just taking care of taking care of this uh, this vampiric maybe cobalt that that you guys had a thing for. Yeah, the monster that's been terrorizing East Haven. We're uh, headed to Town Square to collect a reward. Heard there was a huge reward on it. Well, yeah, and, th and that's what all that rocket was. We were just taking it out. We were just we were just dealing with it. The re the rest of our party got scared. Roll a performance check. Oh, performance! Oh no. Because <laughs> it's not necessarily you guys lying. You're not really yeah. lying. True. Just true. exaggerating yeah. the truth. About yeah. How you're, far are you willing to go? Yeah. You're exaggerating. 1D6 for that. Uh, yep. You, situational one d six. Okay. If you wanted to spend it, you don't necessarily need to, but you can. Oh, I'm good. This might be it. <laughs> I think oh, it would be one as well. Yeah. Both. It was you can either, a thirteen. Yeah. Your charisma modifiers are zero. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. That's why I knew I needed it. One, D, six. Oh, is it normal or advantage? Or normal. Normal because you're both rolling. Oh, they can't. Oh, okay. Could they just not take him seriously because he's a big cat? <laughs> and just be rude <laughs> about oh, you it? You guys got so lucky. Like, um, they're just fucking rude about it. I just want to say... Like as okay. I noticed, Big Tune struggling with his performance. I just be like, "Hey, he's nervous." I'll start like petting the back of his head, and he just intuitively that's condescending. Like, Holy holding, shit! No, I gotta, gotta like reach up to do it. <laughs> I would just like to say, uh, meets beats, and you guys freaking tied for your performance score with what the guard was with a twenty-one. So you guys, <laughs> meets beats. So the guard looks to uh, looks to Big Tune, looks down to a little bit to Ebrin, and like they look back and forth. They see the head, whatever. And like he thinks to himself for a second, it was that much of a hassle, was it? You can yeah. you can collaborate the story. He looks to Ebrin. Dude, I kid you not. This thing was insane. Without like the guards realizing, I'm gonna like puppeteer the head almost and be like we come around the corner and this thing's like <sighs> and as I do that the mouth is just gonna spray open at him and kind of like freak him out a little bit you see the the guard who's like closest to you kind of covers his face uh, to keep him like the saliva I don't want to catch vamp vampirism um, I, said, Dad, I don't know can you he like looks to like the other guards in the town like the, the three other guards that are with him can you catch that when they're dead I don't I don't I don't want to deal with it um, go take it to, go take it to the, the town hall. The, uh, the sheriff would like to see it. Uh, he's the one who wanted this thing eliminated in the first place. Uh, he can give you the bounty. Um, you're, you're, if it gave you that much of a fight, well, I'm just glad you're all okay. And yeah. Like, it was close, man. You know, this thing was coming at us from all different angles and yeah, just one big swing by the big kitty man here and... I, I, I yeah, 
I guess as part of my performance, I'm just like, at, according to my role, very poorly trying to mimic that I'm like, that, you know, we had a hard time and it was like, <sighs> like, like I'm kind of beat up a little bit, but not like cut open or anything. Okay, okay. And like the guards kind of like look you up and down and uh, cause like you did come from battle. So there was like a bit of blood and stuff splattered on you anyway. Um, yeah. Unless, oh no, press the digitated it away during the time. I, with him, but. I would have probably noticed, but I probably wouldn't have done anything cause of me being distracted with the box. So that's it, fair. To help corroborate their story, yeah, I wouldn't have done it. Um, well, you two go collect the reward. We're, um, and like looks at the other three. We're gonna go and just make sure that, you know, nobody else in the town might have been hurt in that area since it was in the north end this time instead of the east side. Um, we're gonna take a look. Thank you. Yeah, no, appreciate no you uh, taking care of this for us. Yeah, just let us know if there's anything else we can do for you guys. Otherwise, uh, have a great rest of your day. And I'm just going to kind of walk past them and just plop the head behind me and just kind of, as I'm walking, jiggle the head up and down so the mouth just kind of intuitively goes up and down like it's basically still talking. <laughs> Some see, morbid like, Jim Henson puppet, you sick fuck. Yeah, like one of the guards would like gag as they like <laughs> see the mouth just like dangle up and down. Waka waka. I'm gonna look at Big Tune and just be like, you, you, uh, "That was close. That was too yeah. close." Thanks for saving me there. I don't like talking to people. So the how do you think I are... feel? You had to. I'd square. say at that time. Yeah, I'd yeah. say at that time we approach Town Square and head towards where the sheriff is. All right, as you guys do that, we're going to pan over to the other members of the party, Aethros, Irini, and Ono. You are currently running down the, uh, the street towards the uh, location of the North Look. Have you guys noticed? The guards are actually pretty nice in these towns. Just exclaiming. Yeah, sure. Within a... But a oh, five yeah. minute span, I would say. Five. Yeah, about five from the Black Iron Blades. Um, you would reach the North Look, um, a two story tavern. Uh, looks like it's a tavern in combination type place. Um, rather large, um, very well kept. Uh, you see their, the sign that they have sitting outside. Looks like it was freshly cleaned no more than maybe a couple weeks ago um, and redone. So they seem to be good for themselves as you, um, I would say, you reach the. Uh, the the door to go inside this is it's like an inn you you said right yeah it's like an inn tavern bit of both um okay. rather large so quite accommodating well shall we go inside and i guess prep everybody uh for the evening or you could give me that box again and i can test it out huh i am a hundred percent in. There normally right, probably so would be box. something like I'm gonna comma and say we should do something responsible, but I mean I'm looking at Arini, uh, voice of reason. <laughs> Rini's not saying anything, so yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I'm All like right. contemplating in my head, like, uh, nope, I'm in. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, can we find uh, like a stable or like a secluded area where we can kind of get away with making a little bit of loud noise? Full a pers. Actually, I think this one would be investigation. If you're gonna take time and look for a nice quiet spot. Yeah, I'm totally gonna do that. Why don't Does we anybody want to city a little bit? Well, no, I mean, because we want to kind of do this. I mean, we can kind of go around the city and kind of do that. Uh, oh, oh could I say the uh, on our way on our way to the North Look? I'm kind of invest like I I may have spotted a spot. Can I do that with my investigation? Yeah, like, I would okay, that. Okay, I'm like, uh, anybody want to give me the help action so I can do this with advantage? Sure. Sick. Yeah, I'll, I'll help out because I'm good at investigating. All right, so I hope we found a good spot along the. Holy shit, we found a really good spot along the road. <laughs> Yeah, so as you're 
As you got close to the North Look, um, you saw, like, down a road to the right, um, another well-traveled location um, for foot traffic. You saw that venturing down a little way, maybe between halfway between the North Look and the House of the Morning Lord, there was a nice open area along the wall um, where there was no houses nearby. It didn't look like there was a lot of people. Um, no people at all, actually. A couple trees. Um, Some place that you, you feel like might be able to buffer the noise a little bit better than literally near town square amazing i uh you know magic is so distracting all right so yeah uh, give, give me the box give me the box give me the box okay 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 i'm gonna give you the box i'm gonna give you the box i'm gonna give you the box uh all right uh, yeah okay uh so i i make one quick final assessment i kind of space out and put the box down on the ground um I pull my notes out real quick and add a te- I make a 10 foot radial circle around the box so that I know like this is our working area. Um, I also mark the spot that like Aethros is standing as like a point of like uh, possible like this is you have to be within proximity to get this to go like for my notes purposes. Oh, oh. before you do this Aethros Hold on. Yeah. Um, mm, I don't um, know if I can do that. No, wait, this, 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 it's going to worth it. Hold on. It's going to be worth it. All right. Is there, uh, did I deduce from the last time? Did did the shield do anything? Or did like, you more toilet paper? was it any in the sense of like, maybe I should be doing a specific style? Or am I alluding? Am I getting an illusion to that? You, when you did the, uh, when you cast the shield spell before, um, you noticed that the shield spell itself did not seem to have any extra effect in blocking the impact. Um, it appears that the impact was different from when, like, the impact style was different from when you used Prestidigitation and when Aethros smacked it with his hammer. Right, Um, yeah. The the type of impact was different, and because it was a physical impact you think that the shield spell might not have had the effect you were hoping okay 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 all right i am oh man i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna take the hit with you this time if we get clobbered but this time i'm gonna cast guidance through you at the exact point of you hitting the box and i totally want you to smack the crap out of this uh rini uh, uh, oh man, this is gonna be awesome. While all this is going on, I'm gonna casually just look at Big Two and be like, I think it's a bad idea leaving them alone. As you are, it's like, I feel like something's wrong. <laughs> getting ready to walk into the town hall. Um, we'll, we will pan back to them. So, as you're getting ready to smack your hammer down, we're gonna pan back to the other group. Uh, you walk into the town hall and uh double doors open up to reveal um this wide open central area with uh both tables and chairs um circular square um conference style everything that you're looking for there's a there's a separate area for like a lot of these things depending on the size of the party you have um you see that there is a central check-in desk with two stairs on each two sets of stairs on each side sorry a set of stairs on each side leading to the second story um, torch lights on every pillar that is helping to support this building. This appears to be the general, like, a general area for, uh, indoor-esque meetings and reception. Um, you see that there's a, a person kind of standing behind a desk fiddling through some papers, uh, with a quill kind of signing off on a couple documents as they, uh, see you walk in. A human girl, no more than maybe 20 years old, uh, looks at you both. Particularly at Big Tune, and then uh, back to you, Ibrin. Um, Yes, is there's something I can help you uh, with? Um, my name is Sarah. Uh, why are you here today? Well, Sarah, um, this is my compatriot, Big Tune. My name's Ibrin, and uh, we're here to collect a reward. Don't freak out, but uh, I'm gonna casually just take the head that's behind me and move it forward. We're uh here to collect the monster reward for uh the one that was been sucking the people dry and 
towards the east gate. Sucking people dry, sucking people dry. Oh, um, the, the, the vampire thing. Yes. We, uh, got word during the town hall, uh, meeting where you guys do your monthly sacrifice by one of the guards that there was a, a monster and a, a fairly priced reward that way. So we figured we'd go take care of it for you guys. Well, that was mighty polite of you. We haven't even gotten the chance to put that on the bounty board yet. Um... And she, like, pulls out the stack of papers from under the desk and begins rifling through them at an alarmingly fast rate until she, like, gets halfway down the stack and, like, pulls out the one for the, uh, for the bounty you have here. Ah, uh, yes, uh, glowing red eyes, uh, fangs, several dead people, and, uh, some people missing blood. Yes, um, I believe the total amount that this came to was, uh, 150 gold pieces. That's what I have from the sheriff. Um, uh, yeah, I, I believe that is what he told us, too. I thought it might have been a little bit more, but we could settle for 150 since we Come took on. care of it so easily. Take money and run. If you're looking to, I mean, if you're looking to dispute the claim, uh, you are more than welcome to talk to the sheriff about it. He uh, doesn't have a meeting for about another hour, but um, this is what he wanted it posted as. Um, so that's, I mean, I'm, I'm not in charge of setting the prices. But uh, I can give you this bounty. Um, I would claim the head from you then. And she like looks at the cobalt head, and it's like, I mean, it's not like, you know, oozing or like decaying or anything. I mean, it was just freshly cut this morning, but like, uh, or today. But it, uh, oh, it just like looks so gross me. sitting on the table. I'm gonna casually pan the big tune while she doesn't hear what I'm saying. Like, we're not gonna push her luck. I'm gonna look back at Sarah and be like, you know what, Sarah? 150 is perfectly fine. We took care of it, you guys, the same day. Could I maybe get a little more for a speedy process? Sure, but you know, you seem like a gorgeous, busy gal, so we'll uh, put the head wherever you want and get our 150 gold and head on our way. And you see her kind of a blush for but a brief moment. Oh, well. It, and she like stutters on her words for a bit here. Oh, yeah, one, 150. Um, and she like, you hear, uh, she like disappears below the counter for a second. You hear like the opening of a, a chest and the tossing of coin. And as she, uh, she brings out this, uh, little like velvet bag, um, purple in color, sets it on the counter and uh, pushes it away. 150 uh, gold pieces. And then I will, uh, take the head to, uh, to, uh, the sheriff himself. Um, he specifically requested when this came in to see it, um, and confirm, but, I will, I can send you on your way. I, I'm not worried. And she, like, is standing there now. Uh, she kind of, like, collects the head and puts it in, like, a satchel of some sort. Um, and then, uh, stands waiting to see what you need next. Is there anything else I could do for you while you're here? Uh, I'm basically going to collect the gold and toss it in my hand and catch it and be like, no, that was... It, Sarah, you know, if you were the sheriff, any any questions, uh, me and my compatriot here, we're going to head towards North Look with the rest of our group, grab some uh, beverages and food and, tire and rest up, and yeah. Does your, does your group have a name that you refer to yourselves as? We do not. We do not at the moment. We're oh, we might we bar discussion. We actually figure that out tonight. Well... In my experiences, people who develop a reputation generally have a name for themselves. So, if you don't have one, it would be good to have one. There are many remarkable people who've come through here with a title holding them to some form of claim, um, be it heroics or, you know, the, the world's your limit. But it would be good to think of one. At least then we know what to call you going forward. And she, like, takes the head and, like, um, kind of puts, like, a, a sign up on the reception thing that's saying she'll be right back and, like, is getting ready to walk away if you're, uh, if there's any, if there's nothing else that you need. So she's, like, just waiting for you to leave town, huh? I'm gonna look at Big Toon, be ready to go, and meet up with him at Norfolk, and hopefully the bad feeling sensation we have is I'm not doing anything stupid. <laughs> well, I think you, know, you and I both know that that's not true, but let's go see what they've done. Oh my god, perfect cutaway. Which, yeah, brings us back to the group as Aethros is about to put the hammer down. No pun intended. Very, very much like the uh, 
a front like cover of a fantasy novel where like in the bottom center is the box and just me with a wide-eyed gleeful look as I'm casting magic in between Aethros's knees as he's bringing down the hammer essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of doing what I did the first time where it just swing down, I want to do like a golf swing and try and hit the box. <laughs> Uh, hold on, don't punt I'm this thing. Tired. We have to go look for it later. <laughs> well, is there like a wall I could hit it against or something like that? Yeah, you're oh, technically near the wall the building? anyway. Of I'm the, trying to like uh, pin yeah, it in between. The city. So if you did do that, you could hit it at the wall. At the wall. Hypothetically. Qu uh, question. The yeah. Before I casted Ray of Frost, was there a dent or a divot or a hole where he hit it last time? Was it substantial or was it like, like the force impact obviously affected us in a 10 foot radius. Did it do it vertically and like from all sides? The, uh, like the impact that you. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming like it was some semblance of like force, like equal and opposite reaction thing. I'm like pulling my notes out. Uh, but is it like one of the situations where did it make a divot in the, the, what would be cleared snow, possibly hard dirt or earth? The okay, so you're looking like did the box make an impact in the yeah ground? to to validate him like golf swinging it because if he hits it into this wall and we blow a ten foot section of this wall, I'm gonna be like guys, this is no longer a puzzle box. This is now like the Aethros golf swing special. There was new weapon. <laughs> there was no like impact like from the box itself in the ground where okay. it was hit so whatever it was it appeared to essentially like reflect whatever hit it you know, whether back. that was the yeah it hit it reflected damage backward it didn't impact into the ground okay so yeah then by all means fire away just aim really well yeah and i yeah i'm casting guidance all right so yeah i get myself set up take the extra time do like a practice swing and then, uh, yeah. While this is going on, I imagine Big Tune and I are walking past uh, Black Iron Blades by now. Did we see Ono's stilts, or did he take those once we left? Because with him and with him focusing so hard on the box, did he leave his stilts behind? I would. They were there. As soon as I jumped down to my nook, they were on my back when we went in to talk to them. Okay. Yep, so you don't see his stilts. Okay. While well, they're like, lining yeah. up, I'm gonna sit right outside the circle, like, hands, like, chin in hands, like, <laughs> watching it like a little TV show. The best show in town. Yeah, All right. I'm... So, I just imagine Aethros, you know, going through the standard golfing procedure for prep, doing a little wiggle, readying mm -hmm. his legs, and yep. uh, hitting yep. it like a freaking golf ball. No um, bridge golf coach right behind him, like, yep, just relax, choke up on the, choke up on it a little bit. There you go. All right, breathe and swing. I want Aethros, uh, and oh no, were you next I'm to Aethros again, or are you out of the? I'm I'm not in between his legs to give him like swing ability, but I am within touching distance to cast guidance on him to see if that by me casting magic upon him while he's doing a physical action. This is I'm trying to literally go down my li my checklist of possibilities. I want both of you to make a constitution saving throw. Absolutely. Constitution saving throw. Bloosh. So, as uh, you hit the box and you are you see it beginning to fly into the air, you feel once again that lot that uh, both loud and uh, forceful impact uh, hit you once more. But as oh no, this time is a little bit more prepared. He watches the box fly up against the wall of the uh, of the city. He looks back and he sees that Aethros is not with him, and in fact Aethros has been pushed back. Another ten feet. Oh um, shit! <laughs> uh, barely, barely keeping himself from uh, essentially being pushed into a nearby building or no tree, nearby tree. Yes. And uh, the box 
flies up and hits the wall of the city and makes another loud impact. Um, you see that the box itself doesn't ricochet any direction. It hits the wall and it falls straight down to the ground. What does it look like this time, though? The box? Yes. Does it make a color code indicator of white? Or does it make a green-blue color code indicator or a new color code indicator? It is a color code indicator of white. Okay, okay, okay. So, all right. So I think I have to physically be contacting the magic and we have to do a physical action. Violence may not be the answer. Um, As of when Ben hits it, I'm going to look at Bictoon and realize the back of his hair on his neck is rising and be like, all right, they just did something, didn't they? <laughs> The yeah the 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 noise level, uh, is loud enough that you still can hear it from Black Iron Blades, but it's not nearly as forceful as what it was when you were out in the middle of the street. So they would be able to hear that you've made your direction where you were supposed to go, but whether or not you're at that location, they don't know. But the ideal like because I got that I'm not trying to force a nat twenty, but like yeah. we got a pretty good spot. So yeah, it's, like... it's you. You feel that this location is not one that would immediately alert guard presence. It's it sounds like a popping noise, not like an explosion. More like an elderly else. couple in the building adjacent to us. Did you hear that, Ma? I think someone dropped a bucket. Yeah, like yeah, like something that like like kids playing with like some form of toy or something. Not not like someone's blowing up a building. We got firecrackers out here, y'all. That's all. So, it, it doesn't... You know that it wouldn't alert instant guard presence, but definitely, like, Ibrin and Bictune would be able to... Be, because they were nearby, um, would recognize that you guys are doing some shit. Okay, so the 10-foot radius, it went... He, Aethros, went beyond the 10-foot radius, but the radial, like, explosion of gust was still 10 feet right correct he got pushed back so like he's like just outside the radius now and the explosion itself was still that 10 foot radius hammering notes out already that was amazing yeah it was you see him fly it was awesome I uh, put that it in the notes. It, yeah, I think because of the equal force, <laughs> it, you swung hard enough. I think, yeah, it was an appropriate amount of strength to be pushing you back. Aethros, ace points, man. I got another great idea. I run up to where the box is. It's right against the wall, right? That's on the ground right next to the wall. Okay. Yeah, I run up to it and try and jump and stomp on it to fly up. Because when Iridi said he flew, I want to fly. Oh dear God! He can fly. He can fly. <laughs> okay, I want I you. I want to see if I can like jump up on top of the wall. I'm just sitting right next to Arini, taking notes, smiling, looking at you. Make a strength check. Standard roll. I'm pretty uh, sure that box is impenetrable. Flat strength check. The magic. Flat strength. Oh God! <laughs> the same as last Ooh, time. <laughs> You're getting midline, my dude. <laughs> okay, so this would be yeah. about the time. When Bigtoon and Ebrin would like turn, they would like be at the north look and like, you know, uh, maybe at that intersection right before they would turn to go into the building. And they would uh, hear another popping noise as Aethros, as you stomp on the box, you are in fact launched uh, 10 feet up into the air. Um, as you hear another popping noise, Bigtoon, you would, uh, and e uh, Ibrin, you would look to the right, and while you can't see everybody, you would barely, as he hits his, like, peak, see a, a, a just a, for a fragment of a second, Aethros's head, um, like, between two buildings, uh, the roof line down just low enough to catch a glimpse of his black hair before disappearing again behind a building. He's just trying to live his Lopez fantasy. I'm, I'm literally... just going to kind of <laughs> give a big sigh and put my two fingers on my uh, upper nose, yeah. rubbing my eyes and be like, victim, was that Aethros? So yeah, we're in the, we're both in the same animation because that's literally what I was about to say too. Yeah. I'm <laughs> drawing right next to you, Arini, like a two-figure drawing with Aethros in the drawing, basically of like 
the possibility of us using this as a trampoline. <laughs> See, I mean, it, yeah, it could be helpful if we're trying to like make an extra bit of jump. Like, realistically, yeah. this box is cool, but the possibilities have now opened up to a tremendous amount. I'm just going to look at Aethros okay, dude so, again. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I jump on the box, I go up. When I come down, do I land on the box again? For fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm going to say for sake of simplicity, no, you land next to it. Okay. For like the sake of saving time... Walk. Is Let's this say going to for... be a continued instance where we're going to continue experimenting on the box, or I would have, I would have at this point <laughs> because they probably would have heard us. I would have pulled the box, gotten him, taken more notes, and been like, "All right, let's go get a drink. Let's go take notes. This is awesome." Yeah. Obviously, physically beating the crap out of this box, I like hold it up, and I assume it is it, it is like, immaculate. Yeah, like. Uh, y there's a scuff on your warhammer, Aethros. I, this there, this thing is <laughs> damn near impenetrable. I commend you for such a valiant effort, but maybe your martial prowess is not the way to open this box, at least at this time. If when I make that gesture, right, that's a good idea. I cast sacred flame on it. Oh, the gesture fuck. I make towards the uh, big tomb, asking if that's Aethros, and he basically just makes the same facial expression and says, "Yeah." I would say if you want to go over there, you can. I'm gonna go into North Look, so I'm coming I would, with you. I would open the door to the North Look for Big Tomb, and then him and I would walk in as those guys would be wrapping it up. And we don't know if there's ball. guards over there, and we don't want to be involved with that. <laughs> if there's a bar, that's essentially where I'm going. Okay, so I'm gonna get this straight. Ebrin's <laughs> going into the north look big tune is going to see what the party's doing aethros is no, casting no, no, no. sacred flame I went, with, I went with ebron okay both okay in the north look. you're both like okay yeah. you're going us to the two north are basically look. like uh, i'm going inside you it's like, yep yeah, behind you aethros is casting sacred flame on the box but is ono holding the box while we're doing that yes i am actively holding the box yep. and arini is just no. being chill okay like giddy. I I Cast still have I still have yet to notate whether or not cantrip level spells, depending on if if it's a variation, are negate. So okay. I'm holding on to this box. Huh, I have to roll a saving throw for the box. No oh, shit. <laughs> oh wait, that might be good. I mean, like pong and just shoot it right back. <laughs> I mean, like at this point. I, I'm holding the box. I'm. Oh, the dice are rolling. <laughs> I'm holding the box. I assume at a point of uh, where uh, some function would be, hopefully in enough time to be like, oh shit, he's casting magic. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your spell save DC, Aethros? 15. Okay, as you uh, channel your sacred flame. You see that the box itself, uh, oh no, you would see this since you're right there, too. Um, Round zero. The box itself uh, almost matches the color on the runes of your Sacred Flame itself, so that radiant yellow gold energy, <gasps> and absorbs your spell. Wow. The hey, runes glimmer and like <laughs> glow like periodically, like flickering the letters. For about 30 seconds before going back into its uh the way it was before okay in that time i'm fidgeting with the box physically just like trying oh, to like can... mechanically yeah. like move it and stuff yeah anything that i would have seen illuminate first as like an indicator i would have like pressed twisted uh adjusted slid within that span i would have taken that like because this is, like, on my checklist, is, like, okay, press a digitation doesn't work. I'm literally going down, like, cantrip list of available spells within our party and, like, thinking, like, okay, what we can do. Yeah, that, yes. Would I have been able to see what lit up? Um, yeah, you would see that it was, so, the runes on the box itself lit up. So, like, the box, the wooden box, the entire thing didn't glow, but any of the intricate writing that was on the box okay. glowed with that same color energy to match um 
Aethros' spell. So could I use my comprehend languages and see what it says? Oh, Rini. I had that. You beast. You know what? If you have a spell slot left, go for it. I, Hell you're yeah. more than welcome to try. Yes. Just ice, right? <laughs> yeah. While they're doing that, is there an open spot for our party at the bar or a table for us to order some drinks? Yeah, so, um, just the pan real quick. Yeah, when you enter the north This was on the table. There, uh, you would find that, like, there's a table empty off in the corner of the bar. Um, two torch lights kind of illuminate it, but for anybody who's the broody type, there would be a little bit more dark location in that corner. That's where we're going to head. I'll yell over to the barkeep. Barkeep, five beers, please, of your finest ale. And they would begin to prepare that with a nod and bring that over. Um, as, uh, as you use comprehend languages, you see. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, in this instance, Irini, can you join me on the individual moments channel for a second? Yes! Ooh. Sure can. Yes. Okay. Um, how long does it comprehend language like an hour? So as this, so you're looking at it after the spell was absorbed, right? Like the runes yeah, are still going. Yeah, I've seen it lit up and realized, oh shit, I can read this. <laughs> okay. So for you, when you see the runes light up and you cast comprehend languages. You're used to using that spell to, like, read all writing and, like, you know, um, understand what people are saying that you might not normally be able to understand. But in this instance, as you look at Ono and you see the box, like, glowing in his hands and he's, like, mesmerized trying to fiddle with it, you see a silhouette of a person um, whose hands are also cupping the box as though they were in the same place as Ono. And, uh... You see this astral projection, almost, of a, uh, a human woman. Shoulder, uh, just beyond the ear, like, chin-level hair. You can't make out the color. They, um, they're they like a translucent blue, almost like a ghost in this instance. And uh, they're dressed in these immaculate, very, very well-crafted robes. Um, a couple of, like tools uh slown across their side um and they look at the box and they look at oh no they look at Aethros, and then they look over to you and as you're making like as you're looking at this person um they realize that you can see them and uh Gosh. as they look at you their head kind of cocks ever so slightly by now they say, I would hope that those of you who are trying to open my box understand that the physical attempts to open it by force are never going to work. Have you come to that conclusion yet, young uh, Fay? I have. Then let me give you one more hint. And you see, like, the like for you, the runes themselves almost pull off the box. Not, like, like the, the, the radiant energy of the runes kind of pulls off the box and they swirl in her hands. Um, as she, like, lifts her hands up, oh no, himself, almost feeling as though he's frozen in place in this instance. And she, like, begins to walk towards you. And she holds her hands outward. And you, uh, you see this swirling, like, three different rings um, like the runes themselves form three different rings and they're swirling in different directions from each other to be able to open this box forceful magic is never going to open it one needs to open their heart and take time and with kindness on their mind embrace the box and it will react accordingly but it takes a special breed to even begin to attempt that. I trust you will figure it out. And as she says that, 
her image disappears. The runes that were in her hand disappear, and you see them once again on uh, the box itself as Ono is holding it. Um, and time for you begins to continue once more. Um, we can go back to the general channel now. Okay. Oh! And we're uh -oh. back. So, Irini, when you cast Comprehend Languages, that is what that is what happened for you. Okay. I promise I wasn't listening. And at, I would say <laughs> that, like, the 30 seconds would pass. You'd notice, uh, Ono, oh that the, uh, the altering of the, like, you trying to mechanically fiddle with the box, um, you don't get any extra effect that you did before, but anytime you would see a click, you would still see the, the spark in the center that Irini saw the first time, as eventually the runes fade. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm like... Why'd they oh, fade? Oh. No, 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 this is good, this is good. This is, because these are steps in the right direction. Irini, why are your eyes glowing? Wait, wait, I got a great idea. I cast light on it as a cantrip. To try yeah. yeah. So I'm just kind of like stand there and like uh, collect myself for a second and kind of look at the guys and go, uh, there's a lady in that box or on the box, but there is a lady. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, this. We need to get her out then. I, I don't I she's think trapped, she's like an box. actual How lady. But she embedded a message almost and was talking to me in real time. No, nope. um, I'm standing dead in front of you, prepared to like verbatim dictate what you're saying. She would like us to stop hitting it. That's what I gather. Um, I, I kind of give a weird hitting. quizzical look to Aethros and go, "Okay, that," and I like crumble <laughs> up four pages of notes. But what about magicking it? She said, she, first of all, she asked me if we were done with our physical attempts and realized they were getting us nowhere. Yes, most definitively. No. There were, <laughs> there were three rings connected to different ruins kind of swirling around. Um, she gave me a hint on how to open it, though. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. I'm like... Are you going to give us the hint? Feverishly writing notes. <laughs> she said that you have to open your heart, take your time, show kindness to the box, embrace the box, and it would react accordingly. But only a special breed would be able to do so. I then grab the box and hug it. Aww. And embrace it. That's, that's very as nice. As soon as Arini says a special breed, I'm going to casually be in the darkest corner of the table and be like, oh, big tune, here's your 37 gold from uh, slaying the cobalt. As well, 150 with five ways, yeah, right? So 37 for each of us, and then use the two gold to cover the beer. As the barkeep would bring you your first round of drinks, notice that there is only two of you and five drinks here, and uh, look inquisitively, but not uh, not too alarmed at this point, and make their way back. Um. Are the three of you staying outside in that location? Or are you making your way somewhere else? Or... Well, I definitely yeah, think... Well, what? Well, when on? I'm hugging the box, I want to use my healing hands ability on it. Be like, I'm sorry I hurt you. Then use that ability. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the ghost lady didn't like being kicked. Well, At least uh, I'm assuming she was a ghost. Sorry, ghost she lady. looked like a ghost. Um, as you hug the box and you use healing hands, the box itself does not react negatively, but it does, it really doesn't react much at all. It seems to absorb your healing hands. Um, some of the runes on the box lighting up temporarily as it, as your, uh, ability kicks off, but, uh, they only last for but a mere moment before the light disappears. Okay. All right. I think... With Arini's revelation, plus there may be an inhabitant in the box, there's a whole new shelf of lists. I take the box, and I kind of tuck it under my arm. All right. Let's get inside. Let's get a drink. We should rest, and then crack at this thing. Not literally, as I'm saying it to the box, but, you know, we'll take a crack at this later. I'm realizing that I have abruptly horribly named our session in comparison to what actually happened so far oh god <laughs> anyway 
So you make Talk your way to, to the ghostly. you make your way to the north look. Yeah. yeah. Yes, most definitively. Big Tune and Ebrin, you would eventually see the remaining party members enter the North Look Tavern. Do they look any different? Like, essentially, since Ben got blasted away, is his hair all messed up? Or yeah, I mean, into, like, do they have any like soot on their face from their fire blast or anything? Hold on, he's got a tight crop top. How is his hair getting messed up? Yeah, I, it probably looks yeah. pretty much the same as when you left him last. Um, Ono might have a couple loose hairs if he didn't sweep them back, like I'm assuming his token embodies. But yeah. uh, readjust every, my. Everyone looks about the same. I'll basically just uh, signal him with my beer that we're over here and take a sip. Yeah. And then okay. when Arini and Aethros step in to the booth, I'll hand them each 37 gold. All right. I'll, I'll take the money and then I'll probably start drinking right away because, you know, just saw a ghost. <laughs> plop in between Arini and uh, Big Tune, and I kind of look at Big Tune and I go, uh, Arini, do you want a bunk tonight? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Kitty, you're cool with this, right? You're cool? You don't need my protection, right? I don't need your protection. That's never what I needed. And I just kind of look up in the corner de de dejected. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I... I I just... It, it's okay. It's fine. I'll, it's fine. And I kind of like... I pull my beverage close. I pull my scarf down. And, and I take a sip of the, uh, my beverage. And as you do, um, I would say that, like, after that moment where, um, like, the barkeep walked away, uh, he sees all of you finally sitting down and then uh, comes back to your table. Uh, Middle-aged human man, a couple gray hairs, um, rather tall, probably about the same height as, uh, same height as Ebrin, um, not quite as tall as Big Tune. And he comes up and he uh, has like a, almost like a carving knife in his hand with a piece of wood. Um, I was wondering when all of you are going to make your way here. I thought a table with five drinks and two people, that just didn't seem right. Pardon the introductions, bit late. The name's Scramsax and I run this place. Welcome to the North Look. Scramsax? Scramsax. Yeah, I snicker. Scram sacks. <laughs> it's, 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 come on, just don't, don't. It's, that's an impressive name. Kind of shrug, like shrugs it off like he's, he's gotten that before. Oh no, it's you. It's a pleasure. Oh no. Doesn't need, for the first time, oh, someone no. doesn't freaking go, double, double, uh, Double take on your name. Just holds out I, his hand to, to shake yours. I stop writing my notes and I go, I love this bar. <laughs> You're here for the night. Or are you only here for a couple drinks? The sun's rising once again here in the <laughs> afternoon sky. Uh, you guys definitely could use a nap. And I have a mess load of notes to take tonight. Yeah, we'll be looking for lodging as well. Well, I got three rooms available for you tonight. Um, some of the merchants have uh, the remainder of them. We're a pretty popular place. Um, I expect we'll see a lot of them in a couple hours once the sun goes down again. But you're more than welcome to book my other three rooms. It'd be two gold piece, two gold pieces for the three rooms. I, I will two gold down for Arini in my room. I'll slam What's... the extra two gold from our bounty down too as well. Isn't it? You said it was two gold for all three rooms. Oh, it's not. Sorry, I missed like two gold. Two gold per room. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah. So two gold for Arini and I. I'll pay um... four gold then. That way, I got my own room, and Aethros and Big Tomb can split a room. All it. Sounds good. Because I can't count to two. 
I'll get you the room keys. In the meantime, you're more than welcome to some food. Um, I hold up two tankards and I go, this is one. And then when you finish the one, it's you have the second I one. I take two. one out of your hand and down it right away. Right, so that's like, the one. Uh, that's step one. But now there's one. So there's one and one. So there's always I mean, just logic. One. I mean, your logic is not wrong. And I down the other one. I, I can't doubt it. And now there's none. Damn it, he drank my beer. I'll, I'll get you more, don't worry. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, there's really nothing else to do right now because nobody from the shops is going to be here, so we can just... Is Relax. there food? Can we order food? I can get you some meals. If you're looking for fish-type food, we got some knucklehead trout that we're cooking up in the back. Otherwise, we got venison from the local wildlife. Oh. Could, Anything uh, but milk for my companion here. And I'm gonna just gonna tap Nick or Big Tune in the back. Yeah, please. Let's. Uh, we have we have uh, dietary needs. Uh, Big Tune is lactose intolerant. Um, I don't believe any of us are vegetarian uh, or solely pescatarian, but I definitely want to order some of the knucklehead trout. Does that come with or without the bones? Generally speaking, we try to debone them. The uh... fair. The bones themselves are used for scrimshaw. Yeah, I so. was just... I figure you guys probably have pulled those and probably done what you will. I mean, if you happen to have any extra ones, you know, you could toss those on the plate. I wouldn't mind that. It gives you a... just a dead face look. And then looks uh, at the rest of the party. Is anybody... Uh, is everybody okay with venison and knucklehead trout, or...? I'll take the yeah. venison. I'll, I'll take some food. Food for the table. Kind of End you. another round, please. He gives you all a nod. I'll be back with more drinks, and I'll let him know what you're looking to order. I'm get your food out here soon. As he turns away, I, like, pull out a small, like, hodgepodge journal of notes and open it, and I go, Okay, uh, we mulled around this for a couple of times. We probably should get down to business since we're picking up pace. Group names. I'm going to place the two extra gold from our bounty in the center of the table and be like, this is the uh, leftover from us splitting the bounty, so we'll have to worry about the rest of the food and drinks later. Cool. I'll put two down for that to at least get a start on that. Okay. Um, and as far as names, I mean... Personally, I don't care. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, fair. I know this is literally like the uh, dilemma of life uh, when it comes to adventurers, huh? I'm having uh, DM PTSD. It's like, out of character, I would love for us to be called the Thundercats. In character, <laughs> Big Tune doesn't know what a cat is, so I can't suggest it. I know. I On my list of names, I have yeah, the Thundercats or, like, bad pun variations of that, like the the Lightning Tigers or a variation of that. But that's, yeah, that's we're, we're tongue-in-cheeking the shit out of that. Yeah. Um, well, do we want to make a name now, or should we wait till we reconvene with our monk? No, I because just figured... We... We start the last thing I came up with is, oh no, it's us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> vanity aside, that's adorable. Just, it's us. <laughs> I-T-Z-U-S. It's us. It's yes! <laughs> as, you, uh, as you all are, you know, talking amongst yourselves, uh, Scram Sacks would bring you out um, the plates of yeah. food that was requested. You'd refill your beer. Um... And I want Ebrin and Aethros and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, oh no, the three of you, I want you to make perception checks. And four. Normal or advantage? A standard roll. Uh, wait, but Big Tune, add a d4 because I'm, I'm tapping you and I'm giving you guidance because you made me giggle. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not rolling, but yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. E oh, I don't yeah, it is the three. So Aethros, Ebron, and Ono for my three. Damn. Um, 
Ono and uh, Ibrin, you're like both just between muddling things over of like, you know, how today went up to this point and like enjoying your food and maybe taking a couple of puffs on your pipe. Um, you don't really see a whole lot. Aethros and Ono. Um, Aethros for sure would see um, one of the members of Torgs come in and claim a table. And Ono would see that one of the people who've come in claiming a table is Sephic Keltra, the person that you are all currently trying to currently trying to figure out. I deadlock and pull my tankard up to my lips without it touching and as quietly as I can, but appropriately enough for that the table can hear. I go, our target is in sight. Everyone be freaking cool. I, when he says that, I'm going to start absolutely like, I mean, realistically just staring because I don't have any sort of social capabilities of being sneaky <laughs> about that. If I can, like, if I could write it on a slip of paper, we need rest. We should just investigate. Be chill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There. Yeah, lean over to Ono and be like, why do we want to talk to this guy? Or what do we want with this guy again? I can't remember. I kind of, like, lean in really close. He's a target for... Do we want to kill him? Uh, well, I mean, okay. We okay. could, potentially. But, I mean, I ultimately, I think we just need him to stop what he's doing. But... I mean, well, what like, is he you know, doing? he's suspected for being the result of all the killings and slayings within Ten Towns. He is the prime suspect uh, for that. Also, he freaking... Why don't we just go ask him if he's a murderer? No, 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 no not cool, no, no, no. Plus, he's, oh. he's working, he's likely working with, uh, wow, Ice Queen, no, Ice Queen's not right. Maiden. The, uh, yeah, there we go. Frost. <laughs> Frost <laughs> enough. Like in Explain. in the perspective of <laughs> Yeah, I essentially I pull the picture book out and I go, Oriel, her, this this figure, this visage. Yeah. He is like associated with with <laughs> her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And on this page where you see like the happy fun times, okay, so we're gonna go back another page. Yeah. we see the, the dark bad times. We need to stay with Oh, the I don't wanna go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta stay in the happy fun times. So we're just gonna observe. We're gonna observe. Alright, I observe. Yeah. Uh what like perception? Yeah, if you wanna do it. Perception. Yeah, why not? Since since I didn't earlier. Do I see him? <laughs> Do I witness a human being? Oh, I don't. <laughs> the fish has hit the table. Big Tune is ripping it apart. Yeah, well, I ordered the venison, but yes. Oh, shit, okay. <laughs> I am entranced by this venison. <laughs> anybody else, like anybody who would like to roll a perception check, you can. I would I would allow that. So Aethros has one, Big Tune has one. If anybody else wants to roll one, they can. Yo, get it, Arini. Ibrin, did you want to roll a perception check or no? I rolled one earlier, so I don't know if you wanted to give me a second shot or not. In this instance, I would allow it. Standard roll. Can I make an insight check to see if, like, if there's a mood about them? Yeah, you can. Sick. Uh, insight. Bloop. I can take that. So, to start things off, Big Tune, your food, amazing. So amazing, in fact, uh, after this long day that you are solely focused on that right now. And it's definitely not, definitely not Cephic that you guys were just talking about. Um, Aethros, Irini, and Ibrin... Um, you you see that the uh, the Torg's crew itself is like filtering in, so you have like Torga herself eventually makes her way into the building into the table. Um, the Orcish fellow um, 
the tiefling, and then it would be Sephic and the two humans um, who were uh, a part of the crew as well. So, um, you see them well, all... Oops, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So, Sephic's at the table, or did he go to, like, his room? Sephic, as of this point, is sitting at the table with the crew. Um, Torg is kind of leading conversation about how the day went uh, with everyone and, like, distributing the daily, like, payments to everybody. Um, you see that Torga pays for all the food and drink. She pays for any um, anything extra that the party wants. But the party was informed by um, Torga. Uh, Ono wasn't there for that part. But uh, that they were staying at a local house um, that they rent out while they're in Bryn Chander. They don't stay at the North Look overnight. But they do come here for food and drink. Um, so at the moment, they're all sitting at the table. Uh, Sevik himself is quiet as far as conversation is concerned but you see that piercing blue uh you know the piercing blue eyes that he has um and whenever asked questions uh Sephic will answer but he keeps otherwise he keeps quiet seems to eat his meal and uh not really partake in conversation is there anything in, uh, as far as insight oh no you were looking for like what the mood is at the table is that Essentially, what I got? like, yeah, I'm I'm looking over it. Like, they've all seated now. Clearly, there's a discussion. Obviously, Sephic is not interacting very much. So, I want to draw off of essentially, like, yeah, if I can pinpoint his in intuition, what's going on with him. I mean, that's a lot. Of, I'm not getting a lot, but you know, anything. Um. Yeah. So the overall, I guess for lack of a better term, the overall vibe of the table yeah. is, uh, like they're coming off a of word. Yeah. Like it's, it's end of day stress, but a bit upbeat because they had a good payday. Um, Sephic himself, the mood is a little harder to read. Um, while it's not hostile, it's not negative. It just seems to be kind of like a blank slate. Um, can't really gauge he himself but everybody else at the table seems to be having a good night so far continually filling up with drinks um eating a hearty meal um i guess how long do we want to stay and investigate and is there anything else in particular that we need to uh that people have questions we, about at this point do we see if they're armed or not i mean they probably are holding some arms i mean like they're we all are carrying. We're all holding. There's no weapon check at the door, at least. Not that. Yeah, Aethro points correct. out that they all have two arms. I, not in okay. agreement. So, do you get the two arms, but not the two tankards? Uh. uh I go back to that. drinking my drink. The... No, I think you would just say, "Yeah, they have arms." <laughs> yeah. On each side. You would say like that the uh, the crew does have like uh, like weaponry at their sides. Um, for the most part, it appears to be short swords. Um, Torga herself carrying hammers rather than swords. Uh, you don't see anything on um, Sephic as far as weapons are concerned. Um, he has nowhere to hide them on his person because he doesn't wear any like heavy clothing. But you don't see anything on him. Everybody else has some form of weapon on them, uh, just strapped to their side there as armament but not being used well i suggest uh not getting in a fight at the bar then agreed i i, I think we honestly oh, brawls are them... always fun i know but i think we're kind of outnumbered and we do not have the mustard strength to make it through oh i would say 30 seconds of combat successfully uh you know uh, let's just chill and hopefully they leave before we need to go to bed and we just watch them I would say as like the night kind of winds down um, I would step back outside to if there's a bench nearby and like towards the entrance and just take a rest of my pipe and uh, basically like when Sephic comes out I would you know stealthily follow them and kind of see what they're saying um, but I would also tell us that the group first, like, guys, I'm, uh, I'm pretty full. I'm going to go outside and take a, you know, break, use my pipe. Um, once Sephic leaves, 
I mean, I kind of see where they're going. So if anyone wants to follow once they leave and kind of go with me, you can come. Otherwise, I got my key to my room and I'll hand my one set of keys to Irini and one to Big Tune. I'm like, otherwise, you guys can go to bed, too. And then I'd get up and go outside. Please be careful. Oh, golly. Just please be careful. So observation mission, please. It's strictly observation. So the party um, takes a bit of time, you know, enjoying some more drinks, some conversation, and kind of just keeping an eye on the Torg's table. And uh, after about another hour or so, uh, of enjoying drinks, honestly, quite fast paced. Uh, like they caught up to the amount of drinks that you were having in a shorter period of time, and uh, they get up from the table. You see Torga uh, pay off her tab with Scram Sacks, who humbly nods and takes her money. Um, and the party themselves, Sephik and Te- uh, Sephik and Toe, makes their way. Out of the uh, North Look Inn. Is there anything that anybody inside would like to do in this moment? I mean, I I take note of the the entirety of their party, kind of sizing everyone up, and then I look at the rest of the party and say, "I think it's bedtime." Still eating, so. <laughs> Where are you still so... housed? That's your eighth plate. <laughs> You are housing that venison. There's a, a stack, big like, in the center of the table, and Big Tune oh, is just going plates. ham. Just straight up plates. Like, you have literally, you just drank a gravy boat instead of your ale. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm saying I'm impressed. I drink his ale while he's drinking Boy. the gravy boat. Oh, really good. <laughs> 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 um, as the party... Uh, the Torg's group uh, leaves the tavern. Um, Ebrin, you uh, casually smoking your pipe, uh, having to refill it maybe once or twice. You uh, you see the group of them, the six total staff, um, between Torga, the orcish fellow, the tiefling, the two humans, and Sephic. Um, they kind of make their way down the street uh, casually. Uh, were you, you said you were planning on possibly following? Yeah, so I'm going to have, like, my jacket or cloak, whatever, kind of fully engulfed, my hood up, and basically being like Aragorn, just chilling in the bar in a corner scene, but I'm going to be doing that outside, and is it nighttime now, or is it daytime? Yes, the sun itself has set for the second time, so the afternoon sun is down, it is officially nighttime at this point. Once they get about 60 to 75 feet up, I'm going to stand up and just slowly start walking similar speed to them, the same direction they're going. Uh, Because now that it's night, I've got dark vision and I can see up to 120 feet. Okay. (laughs) Only 120. (laughs) The shade. (laughs) Are you, so you're trying, you're not trying to be seen, you'd be stealthy? Yeah. Roll a stealth check for me, sir. Live in the shadows. What? You gonna kick a bucket? No, not 20. No Please more more advantage. What? what are you gonna advantage from? Dark vision. Yeah. That doesn't nah. give you advantage. No. Standard roll. Standard roll. Yeah. Weaken with the advantage. Oh, yes! My highest possible roll I can get. You are the next. <laughs> Ebrin, you blend in seamlessly with the uh like the surroundings taking in every shadow that you can to like uh stay out of sight when there isn't a place for you to blend into you uh make sure to not make any extra footsteps stepping in previous made footwells um what you see is uh between the north look and the black iron blades there's a intersection like a four-way intersection and you see uh Sephic himself is uh He's saying, like, farewell to his uh, group that he's with. And as they wave to him and continue moving straight, Sephic himself takes a turn to the right and begins walking down a side street. What would you like to do? 
I'm going to continue to kind of follow where he goes, but far enough away to where my presence isn't noticed. Yeah, you said like 60 to 70 feet at least. Um, yeah. So you keep your eyes on Sephic. Uh, he carries no torchlight. Um, the, the torchlights that we're seeing on the main streets uh, seem to be more spaced apart in this area of town. And he uh, continues the journey straight, making a couple extra turns um, into some side areas until eventually he stops at this uh, decent-sized um, wooden building. Um, it appears to be moderately reinforced. And uh, he opens the door, uh, a metal door in this instance, and uh, closes it behind him. You find yourself about 60 feet from this building. Um, the building itself being... Well, let me get some dimensions for you. Uh, about 80 by 100 feet. Is this a place of rest? Is this like a business? Can I tell that from how far away I am or no? Make a perception check for me. Can I go from absolute high to absolute low? Let's find out. Oh. Not right in thing. the wave. Um, this looks like some form of storage facility. Um, like based off of what you can see it doesn't give off anything of like a business it's not residential you can detu deduce that much it seems to be some form of storage building okay um i'll let a minute or two go by and then i'll start kind of walking up towards it slowly a minute or two goes by no negative reaction no nothing appearing out of like the corner of your eye um as you make your way up to the building, what do you want to do? Do I hear any commotions or anything? Is there a sign? Is it a business? Or does it still just look like a general metal door that he entered in? Standard metal door. You do see um, there is like a small sign next to the door. Um, written in common, it just says uh, cold item storage. Um, next to it. So for like uh, preserving like meats and various things that people might get that require a specific storage temperature. This is seems to be a place where they can do that. Um, you don't hear any commotion coming from the inside. Honestly, it's dead quiet inside that building right now. Or at least from what you can hear by the door. How far you can hear because of it being metal is hard to say, but you don't hear any noises coming from inside. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Uh, is there any like rooftop I could get to to overlook, like Batman, or no? <laughs> Continuing off of your current perception check, you there is one other building nearby that has a, a like a roof line you might be able to get to. Um, it would take a bit of work, but as far as being able to, you know, do what you did like in Targos and like parkour to get up on top or anything like that, um, there's nothing in that close of a vicinity where you'd be able to make that make that jump. Um, I'm gonna open the door and go in then. Okay. The rest of you. Hey, are you all getting ready for bed, or what is the party doing at the North Park right now? Uh, in, out of game, I'm about to post an awesome picture in chat. Uh, in game, <laughs> I uh, I would have made our way up to the room if Arini did. Yeah, I would have just after eating, probably head up. Uh. <laughs> I guess what I do is dependent on what Aethros does. Ooh. I, I think Aethros is actually going to make a smart decision, or the wise decision for once, and go to bed responsibly. 
Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sleep responsibly. Yeah. Then yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got all the things he would like to do, but I have the box. <laughs> he doesn't think it would be wise to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, the ceilings are, are probably less than 10 feet, so... <laughs> yeah, like, let's not screw with the structural integrity of the place we're sleeping in. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Night, guys. Like, charge into our room. All right, the four of you find your way to your rooms. Um, Before going to bed, is there anything people wanted to do in their rooms? Otherwise, um, I will pan back to Ebrin. Yes. I assume that Aethros would have filled me in on the stupidity going on over by the wall. So I think I'm pretty good. Okay. Yeah, yeah I tell you about the box. He would give you the Aethros rendition of what happened with the oh, box. Absolutely. No, like, I'm yeah. expecting to hear about him flying and Like a and little kid golfing. telling their parents. Oh, I absolutely did fly. fly. <laughs> like,. Nothing yeah. about the lady in the box other than that you tried to hug it, but. I'd probably be like, I kicked a lady in a box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would get to like 90% no context. Story, and like, oh, yeah. And there's also some lady in the box, but whatever. So then, anyways. He says it so like, nonchalant. I'm kind of pissed I kicked her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I kicked some lady in yeah. the box. No big deal. Whatever. Yeah, like phrasing. <laughs> So <laughs> throws phrasing. Oh, um, oh yeah. no, Irini, anything that you were planning on doing before bed? Yeah. Um. So I, I we gotta get in the room. Um. I kind of like look around. I kind of uh settle in. I I put the box like on my where am I sleeping? I like pull off the sheet and everything. And I kind of make on a table like a nice padded plush uh, spot for the box and kind of put it near where uh, whatever, if there is a small fireplace or if anything of that short, like if, we're, if this is plush, uh, I push it up to that. And then uh, I begin my nightly like cleaning ritual. And I look at Arini and kind of stop and go, uh, since like i ju like i judge can i make a uh, uh hmm it's hard for me to judge against arini can i make a insight check on arini what are you trying to perceive if oh, she is okay with me doing a like nightly cleaning ritual because obviously there's no shower in here like we're not like in, in a friggin motel 8 or anything but like if she would be comfortable with me doing like my continued cleaning ritual because I haven't fully been able to clean myself because I've been afraid to do it in front of Big Tin. Okay. <laughs> Roll an insight check. I kind of like stop in the middle of like me disrobing and kind of give you a, like a look, not of like a weird look, but like a, are you cool if I like clean myself? Go for it, if you don't mind, if I maybe look at the box. A hundred percent. Cool. So, yeah. So I, well. <laughs> I, I, I like, I just were about to get real weird. No, no, yeah. <laughs> you don't mind if I uh, watch. There's a reason why I picked Arini, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, I, uh, Ono begins to, like, pseudo disrobe. And if you're paying attention, uh, as I'm like taking off my shirt and everything, I'm like prestidigitating dirt and everything, and like I have a small little thing of water. And uh, as my shirt comes off, you can see I have chest bindings, uh, and I they're like dirty and sullen. And I kind of turn my back to you as I like undo my chest bindings and put on fresh, clean linens around my chest, and just continue with my nightly cleaning ritual. So while you're doing that, I'd probably get the box from its little nest, kind of like crisscross applesauce myself on my bed and just kind of hold it like the ghost lady was holding it in her little speech to me. What? I kind of stare at it. What? She was, just, she was just holding it. But she had her like hands cupped around it. Are you like outwardly saying this or are you like just you're quietly doing this? I just like, quietly. 
holding it, just like staring so, at yeah. it. So, yeah. I like finish one wrapping or two wrappings of my binding and I turn around and I'm like, how's it going? That's good. You are holding it a really weird way. Why? What is what is the purpose of that? It's the way the the ghost lady held it. I, like undo my hair and begin to like comb my hair out. Like, how was she holding it? Wait, hold on. Describe this lady again to me. She was um. I wrote that down. <laughs> oh yo, reading with the notes. There wasn't like a whole lot. She was like. She was kind of like bluish in color, like ghosty, like you'd see in like a cartoon. Uh, oh, nice. She had chin level hair, and she was wearing these nice ass robes with some tools on her side. What? It, I think she might have made the box. So you definitely saw like a spectral entity inhabiting the box. It's like her ghost is in control of the box. Would Ono be interested in a history check? Absolutely. Uh, so with her kind of giving me these details, would that technically be a help action? I would allow it. Yes. Irini, um, I'm going to give you just a Ugh. beautiful tip of information, and it's not anything on you. It's actually something that might be just, it's, it's thematic more than anything else. Um, you have this wonderful cantrip called Minor Illusion that you I can do. use to recreate images oh. of like things that you've seen. Um, yeah. So you can literally give me like a free. You can hollow. give like a full on like if you're looking for a person, you can use like Minor Illusion. Be like, have you seen this person? And then whip out like an image of them if you've seen them before through Minor Illusion. Like it's it's a really good thematic cantrip. If you ever are looking for a way to describe something, you can just be like. Like if you don't know how to describe it, like I use minor illusion to describe what I saw, and like everybody else will hear it that way too. It's it's a fantastic tool in your in your pocket. I was wondering what that was good for. <laughs> uh, can I do that then? Yes, you can, and that would help cover the the help action too. Okay. Uh, so, just the dice, right? Yeah. Um, and then just post minor illusion in general. So, Irini conjures essentially an image of this woman that uh, she saw spectrally. Ono, oh, in your past, in the, the writings that you've heard, the things that you've seen, she is describing to you the image of Pezra the Red, the oh. one of the greatest artificer wizards to have lived since recorded history has become a thing. Uh... I mean, she lived uh, a couple thousand years ago, but she was one of the greatest. Like, she's the reason why so many places are as technically, uh, technologically advanced as what they are. And she's describing the image of this person to you. Uh, you like, I assume, yeah, you've got like a nice holographic image of it, and like my my long hair. I'm parting the long hair in front of my face, and I'm like, oh, Arini, do you have any idea? You have, this is like, I've read about this. She's, she's like, she's one of my idols. Holy cheese and crackers, Arini. This is amazing. As far as, as far as you hold in the box, um, Irini, you don't get, like, holding it and, like, opening yourself up to it, you don't necessarily get a reaction just from that, but, uh, you have a feeling you might be on the right track for what's supposed to happen. I, I burn my last first level spell and I cast Charm Person on the box. Okay. Interesting. What's your spell save, DC? Uh, 14. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. And what are you... You feel that the spell has made contact with the box. What are you trying to do with this wonderful charm person? I 
outwardly just in a very calm tonal voice uh in my natural voice uh i i I just say i hope you're comfortable tonight i'm gonna keep you close to the fire and if anything else I, i will make it my personal mission just to make sure that we are on the same plane of understanding because i just i just want to know your your cool secrets that's that's all and if you don't want to tell them to me now that's cool uh but if you do hey i i am all ears i want you here behind my ears after saying what you say i want you to make an arcana check okay Got plus six to this, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't help me. So as you, as you charm the box and you're speaking to this box, you feel your own arcane energy and the arcane energy from within the box almost like meet halfway between you. Oh! Like, you feel it. It's not visibly there. Yeah, but there isn't, like, a fight like it was before. Right. And as it does so, you feel yourself for but a moment waver. And it fizzles. Oh. But (sighs) you don't feel that that was a bad thing that happened. And with that, I'm going to pan back over to uh, to Ah! Ibrin. Ibrin, you... Quietly, with that fantastic stealth roll you had, are able to open the door of the uh, the cold storage and close it behind you. There's no creaks. There's no um, metal on metal. As you pull it closed, you find yourself in this dark room. Uh, for you, you can see one end to the other filled with crates and barrels um, in various locations, not like front to back completely sealed. But uh, various locations, there are stacks of, stacks of crates and barrels um, inside this building. Uh, what are you trying to do right now in here? I really what I was hoping to imagine. Um, I was kind of hoping to imagine to walk into like a help desk and a person kind of there be like, uh, can I help you? So is there a help desk or anything of the sorts? There is not. This place is entirely storage with some notification on like what items are for what business like there's some items from the north look that are stored inside here uh, off to the side a couple crates um there is uh, a couple items from another local establishment that uh deals with a lot of food and is food storage and then there's even a couple items from like black iron blades that are also stored here um but there's piles of crates and barrels scattered throughout this room you do see that there is a second story um, but you cannot see from where you are right now uh, how to get up to that second story on the inside here. Without the help desk, um, I'm thinking it's going to be my best bet to stealthily get out of there. Um, so I was hoping there'd be like a help desk, be like, hey, you know, we're going up north here in a moment um and i'm curious to see if you could show me around your storage because we might have run into like a polar bear a mammoth or a yeti or something and we're looking to maybe although it may be cold outside uh proper place to store it with that not the case and Are my guy role playing this out in your mind like in the dark shadows <laughs> yeah no literally this is what i was thinking while i'm this walking what... i'm like all right cool this conversation i'm gonna have this is what and... even does when we're not around well the reason why i'm thinking this is because the last place we stayed at the barkeep had an odd request for Sefik to go into the cold storage and considering this guy is presumed to be the guy murdering everybody, uh, I really don't want to be the next one. So I will take a quick peek inside after I close the door behind me, uh, realize that there's no one here and I'm going to make a mental note of where it is and head back towards the North Look. 
I want you to make another stealth check for me. Hit that nat 20 again. It's not a nat 20. Not Ibrin, as you attempt to open this door a second time to make your way out, you open it about three inches, and the door itself freezes where it is. Oh. Like a sheet of ice. As you turn to look, um, wondering where this ice came from, you see standing on top of the crates, who was not there before, is Sephic Caltro looking down at you. Why did you follow me? And we're going to end it there. Ah! That looks so like good. John's not playing next week. <laughs> yeah. Right. Got any ideas for another character, John? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm hoping I could just disengage all the way back to Norfolk to wake you guys up. Bro, we're taking yeah, a no, solid it's hate. over. Cutting well, action, got, disengage, no. 60 feet away. I am a. I am. We. I am out of. We are out of spells. <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, so you guys good for next week Sunday? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm gonna be now. Yeah, I know. We have no choice now. Like Jesus Christ. No, it's not what I was hoping for. I should be good for same time, same place. Um. I think this will be. I've been. I've been trying to get us to this point for a little while, but. Things take a turn, and sometimes that's a good thing. So today oh. was a really great session. I had a lot good. of fun. Hard first battle coming up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, if anybody has anything they need from me regarding information or clarification from uh, maybe I miss said something or whatever, feel free to let me know. Or if you have ideas brewing and you're looking to send them my way, I always like looking at stuff. But uh, otherwise, yeah, let's plan for next week sunday the 13th at 6 p.m it's gonna be a blast all right see y'all then Later. give you a week Bye. to brood yeah a week to brood he's gonna be yeah you could just chill on ice <laughs>